Yeah. HOB, uh, uh. making another hog, baby. We here now. Cheer, cheer. Hog life. Smash that like button, y'all. Let's get it right, y'all. Brooklyn, we here, y'all. Yeah, banging all you fuck niggas. They ain't tell you I'm a nut, nigga. Ball in my hand, I.
nuance, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Man, woman, and children. Sun, moon, and stars. Everything exists has to coexist within. Like I said, another day alive, another day free. Why would I wake up trying to be somebody other than me? Yo, shout it out to everybody in the building right now. Some people's coming in. There might be some people's coming in. There might not be some people's coming in. It's a bunch of buffoonery going on on YouTube. And I'm starting to see a bunch of people are insane. So shout out to the grown-ups that come over here and rock with us. Like my man, Mount Vernon said. He said, this is the grown folks chat. If y'all hear me crystal clear, let me see the dice cubes. If I could do the road call for whoever's in the bill, dad. Can you dig it for whoever was in the bill, Dan? You dig what I'm saying? Can you dig it? You are now rocking with the best. I ain't never said fuck the rest, but you are now rocking with damn near one of the best. I am Sharon McLeod, sir. I am the host, and you are here with Team Guardian. Big Super told me, yes, yes, yes. They hear me crystal clear. They hear me crystal clear. They hear me crystal clear. So let me get on this road call, y'all. We got my man Mount Vernon raised in the building. He's here. He's popping up like a zit. He's here, baby. We got FTC Vice up in the building. Brother from another mother. We got crazy super true blue every day. You dig what I'm saying? Got the shooters in the cut. Uh oh, we got Miss Pam in the building. Hey, Miss Pam. Hey, Miss Pam. I see why Miss Pam don't be wanting me to do the crazy shit. I be watching certain shit. I see why Miss Pam be saying, Dice, stay the fuck away from that shit. That shit ain't you. That's something my mother would have told me. So I love you for that, Miss Pam. I appreciate that, seriously. Because my mother, I could hear her now going, what the fuck are you doing, stupid? That's how she used to talk to me, Miss Pam. You know, like Red Fox? You remember Red Fox and Lamont Sanford? Y'all remember that? You know, Red Fox and Lamont Sanford? He used to go like, you big dummy. But he loved Lamont Sanford. You dig what I'm saying? He loved the Lamont Sanford. That was his motherfucking son, man. Always a queen. I see you, girl. Y'all seen on Red Fox, he used to always go, you big dummy. Or if you say something crazy, he get to grab in his chest. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. I'm coming to join you, honey. I've been using that Shea Moisture. I've been using that Shea Moisture beard oil. I put it on my shorts and that beard balm, and it's growing me up. It's, 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 filling, in them, it's filling in them spots, y'all. It's only been a couple of days and I see the difference. Hallelujah. I'm bullshitting. You know that's how my mind do it. I think I got a great one for y'all today. I got a great one for y'all today, you know. But before I start this, y'all, I want to show a personal... This is something that always... If y'all ain't see the movie The Bronx Tale... Hey, Miss Mimi, I see you in the building. Shout out to Angie, baby. She's one of the members, y'all. She ain't in the building, but she always support me. And if y'all want to really rock and roll with me, join the membership, y'all. They start from $2 to up. $2 up. That ain't number $2. Come get into this membership for this great exclusive content because I'm about to take start taking some walks down memory lane. I'm noticing some of the walks that I went through in my life, I think I got to share with y'all. I might, I, might, I, might, I might scare some of y'all with some of the things I used to be into, but you know what? My God told me to come up here and, and lead by example and show by experience and then congratulate him or her by my growth. These is facts. These is facts. So I'm going to stay in my lane. Everybody got their lanes. I pray for them. I see a lot of the shit still going on on YouTube, y'all. I got to show you something. This right here is going on on YouTube, y'all. Nobody listening, man. Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening, man. Nobody's listening. It's a lot of souls being sold on YouTube, y'all. Yesterday, everybody was so terrified because we had the eclipse. You dig what I'm saying? Everybody was so scared yesterday because that eclipse came through. Miss Darielle, I see you in the building. I see you in the building. And make sure y'all go subscribe to Miss Darielle. She got a nice little channel over there. Slim Goody over there. Her name's Slim Goody. My name's Joe. Your name Woody. She got a nice little channel and she, she's real. She original. She got, some, she got some great stuff to talk about. Go sign. I'm going to drop her link for y'all and get over there and get her popping. 
Everybody forgot about God again. Tribe, I see you in the building. Everybody forgot about God again. Before the eclipse came, everybody was sitting up. Oh my God, the eclipse is coming. Oh my God, the eclipse is coming. It's about to cover the sun. Number one. Everybody thought we was going into darkness for three days. We ain't going to darkness for three minutes. But if you pay attention, every time we have an eclipse, it's seven years apart. Seven years apart. And it happened and it formed a, a, a cross. It formed a complete cross. We got to start getting this shit right, y'all. We got to give, give, give God some time. Give Allah some time. Anything you feel as though that's going to make you live to a better point of being righteous, anything that you feel that's going to make you live to a better part of being righteous, do that. Ladies, do that. Ladies, start telling niggas no. And yo, my dude, start telling these women no, man. Start loving yourself more, man. Y'all remember what my grandmother said? If y'all don't love yourself, who else will, y'all? Look at that story I just did the other day. The apples don't fall from far from the tree. Everybody, yeah, they can criticize Kamora Lee. We can persecute that bitch-ass nigga, Russell Simmons. Then we can criticize, rest in peace, Kim Porter. And then we can persify that bitch-ass nigga Puff. This is my opinion, educational purposes only. But them women wasn't loving they self. They was loving... The allure. They was loving being comfortable. They was loving the mansions. They was loving the money. They was loving the chauffeurs. You gotta love God. Dog soldier salute. I told y'all this in my trials and tribulations. When I put all the niggas in front of God, get in the bag, 10, 20, 30,000 a day, we running around, we doing shit that niggas couldn't even imagine doing. All them niggas is gone. Whether God took them and brought them home, or they in jail, or I had to walk out their life. All the women I put over God. This is my baby here. This is my baby here, God. You don't know nothing about this. That's how ignorant I used to be. See, that's how ignorant we be sometimes. We got the nerve to tell God what he, what he or she don't know. Ain't that some shit? How you gonna tell God what he or she don't know and everything that exists is existing through God? Get them likes up, y'all. This is grown folks conversation over here. I'm going to start it out just like they said with footprints. When I thought everything was better, I went to the beach. I seen two sets of footprints. But when I lost it all and went to the beach, when God used to hold me down, I only seen one set, one set of footprints, one set. And I walked for miles and miles, y'all. Because when you got the cars, when you got the jury, when you got the notoriety, when you got the fame, when you got the validity, everybody want to be your friend. But tell them once, you know, when you can always say yes, your dice, let me hold a hundred dollars. Hold that. Your dice, I need this. Hold that. Your dice, my family. Hold that. Tell somebody no one time and see how they act. I dare you to tell somebody no that you always told yes to. Then you'll really see who they are. Then you'll really see what they feel and how they feel about you. See, but when all that stuff disappeared, I cursed God. I was like, God ain't the one. Fuck you, God. God don't care nothing about me. Pure bullshit. When I was crying out to God and I was damn near ready to go crazy, especially after my mother passed, that's when I heard God said, fool, the only reason why you've seen one set of footprints is because I've been carrying you, my son. See, a lot of y'all don't even know y'all being carried right now. Y'all being directed by God. It's God that brought a lot of y'all over here. I'm here to tell you God is real, man. I thought it would be something different for this new year. They said after 2024, is, you know, as every 80 years, something will be exposed to the world. They showed you what's going on with the Epstein list. Now they're showing you more exposure when it comes to Puff Daddy. They're showing you everything. They're showing you even on YouTube. The evilness in people. The evilness in people. I'm starting to see so much evilness. Passover BL, I see you. I'm starting to see so much wickedness, man. Like, the waters was so calm. Wasn't the waters getting so calm? 
And that is turbulence again in the waters. And I've noticed the turbulence, they still keep coming from them same pressure points in the canal. The same pressure points in the canal, the same strengths of levees, they keep cracking. Like, like they keep trying to fix the levees. No, you can't fix a levee. You have to replace a levee. You got to replace a levee. You can't fix a levee. They was fixing the levees in New Orleans for years. And then one day after them fixing and fixing and fixing and fixing and fixing, them shits just crack. Boom! Had people on top of their houses, man, for days. It's happening on YouTube, y'all. And y'all are absorbing wickedness. I know it may seem like entertainment. Listen to me, y'all. The eclipse made y'all break out. Y'all was terrified. Y'all Even like y'all was terrified. Some of y'all was terrified. 1999. Remember that? December 31st, 1999. Remember that? Remember that countdown because they said the world was coming to an end? In 2000, you remember how many people were fearful and afraid of God then? You see how many people was talking and doing commercials and driving hours and hours? I seen on the news one person drove 17 hours just to get the glimpse of the eclipse. See, people be talking about eclipse. I don't think that's an eclipse. I actually think, to tell you the truth, I think that's some other shit. I think that's some other shit. I don't know why I think that's a mothership. They just told you that there's a mothership that's been sitting behind the sun. See, a lot of people are not thinking about really what's going on, man. You can Google all this shit. Go to NASA. Pentagon, the Pentagon said this shit. CNN said this shit. They said they got a motherfucking mothership that's been sitting behind the sun that's the size of 30 football stadiums. The size of 30 Football stadiums, NASA and everything is telling y'all, quote unquote, that we aren't alone. You're getting more and more sightings all over the place now. CNN just told you that they had seven spaceships. They just told you they got seven spaceships that they've been working on secretly for years. Secretly for years, trying to find out the technology because it's too far advanced. But if you got seven spaceships, right? What happened to the seven pilots that was driving the spaceships? Or other words, what happened to the aliens that drove them here? So you mean to tell me that they just had remote control spaceships? Bullshit. Bullshit. If you go back to the John F. Kennedy speech, a lot of people ain't really want to think about this. Yeah, this is grown folk shit over here, y'all. I know I'm a goon, but one thing my mother did, she made sure I knew how to read. And every time I got a promotion or I made a grade or I did something good. She made sure she gave me a dictionary. I had so many dictionaries, I couldn't stand them. But I love my mother so much now for giving me them dictionaries because she said, baby, you will be ostracized if you don't have the right articulation. If you don't know how to comprehend. She said, baby, anybody can read. But if I tell you the sky is blue and you don't know what the sky is or the color blue is, you fucked up. Shout out to Sharon McLeod, you dig? Shout out to Sharon McLeod. There's some shit going on right now. And it's right now, it's, it's, it's a spiritual war going on. Yeah, I see it. I see it crystal clear. I see it crystal clear. I see that shit just like I see y'all names in the chat. Like I'm looking at this. It's a spiritual war going on because God is already here. Just didn't reveal itself yet. God already here. Just to certain people, he's not going to reveal himself yet because it's only room for 144,000, y'all. 144,000. They say the children of the 70s are going to be the what? The children that birthed the seeds of the children that's going to save the world. So our children, if you're born in 1970 to 1979, our children or children's children is going to be responsible for saving the fucking world. They didn't say it was going to be 144,000 in one time. They didn't say it was going to be 144,000 in one year. They said it's only room for 144,000. That means a collective. This grown folk shit over here, y'all. I wanted to start this off with something that I really seen from the movie Bronx Tale. About 33 seconds, but it's very, very important 
and it's very, very impactful. It's a sign with Robert De Niro when he was talking to his son. Pay attention to this right quick, y'all, and smash that like button. This is Big Dice. Do I have to tell them? Of course you have talent. You got all the talent in the world. Can I be a baseball player? You can be anything you want to be. Remember, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You could have all the talent in the world, but if you don't do the right thing, then nothing happens. But when you do right, guess what? Good things happen. You hear me? You're right. Wasted talent. That was something my father would talk about all my life. Yeah, hey. Come on, let's hurry so we can catch the start of the game. Another day alive, another day free. Why would I wake up trying to be somebody other than me? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Man, woman, and children. Sun, moon, and stars. Everything exists has to coexist with it. Like I said, another day alive, another day free. Why would I wake up trying to be somebody other than me? That's a cold-blooded fact. Let me ask y'all something. Everybody up here now already know what's going on with Puff. How many of y'all in here feel as though Puff going to jail? I still want to know that. How many in here feel as though Puff going to jail? I got a hell of a show for y'all. I'm telling you, I got some shit for y'all. This that shit right here. This that shit. Oh, you good, Derriel? We got you over here. This team guardian. We don't do nothing but show love, man. All we want is the love shown back. That's it, the reciprocated. Like if I throw the ball at you, throw the ball right back to me. If I throw the ball to you, don't take the ball and run away. That's the shit niggas was doing in Brooklyn back in the days. Niggas go to the basketball court if you're not tough. Nigga be like, yo, let me hold your basketball, shorty. Tell him, dog soldier. Let me hold your basketball, shorty. But what your family tell you? You better not give nobody that goddamn basketball. The same way you took that ball outside, you better bring it back. The minute you give that basketball to somebody trying to be cool or pledge your allegiance to the hood, nigga be like, bye. You be like, bye. And you sitting there watching somebody run away with your goddamn basketball and you knew you wasn't supposed to let nobody hold it. Like my mother said, well, either you're going to get your ass beat by the people out there or you're going to get your ass beat by me. And I chose to get my ass beat by the niggas in the street. I chose that because my mother, she was different. You ever got your ass beat, fellas, by a beautiful woman that talked to you so politely? Baby, I don't want to do this to you. <laughs> my mom's turned into a goddamn karate like she was on them karate movies and shit. Baby, I didn't. Have... <laughs> mother, man, she had an arm. She had a plastic arm. My mom's had a plastic arm. She ain't have no prosthetic arm. She had a plastic arm, like plastic man. Like I could be in the living room and my mother could be in her bedroom. And if she hear me say some shit that I wasn't supposed to say, her arm could reach from the bedroom to the living room and slap shit out me. Blah! Swear to God, y'all, my mom's, I don't even know where her arm come from. That shit just... She heard me curse. Blah! That's a fact. That's a fact. You know. It's just a fact. I'll be trying to tell y'all the truth. 
My man Emmanuel said, he laughed at me. That's a fact. My mom's had a plastic arm, y'all. And it wasn't no prosthetic shit. For real. My mother, she, my mother was dangerous, man. My mother grabbed a goddamn broom. Come here, nigga. Younger. Because, you know, I was always big. You know, I was six feet. You know, I was 5'12 and all that shit. My mother was like, I'm not going to be playing with you. You're not going to be playing with me. One of her favorite lines, I'm not your friend. The way you play with them people in the street, you better play with them people in the street. I used to be like such and such moms and them. She used to be like, I don't give a fuck about what such and such moms and them let them do with their children. She said, I am responsible for you. You are my child. That's a cold-blooded fact. See what Super said? He said, when you tell them that stuff that's important, you be like, huh? You say something under your breath, they slap you for that. Yeah! I heard you. Word up. It's a fact, bro. I was, yo, I was always tall and shit. You dig what I'm saying? My mother wasn't with that shit. But how many of y'all seriously think Puff going to jail? Because he ain't been handcuffed yet. Talk about it. Seriously, in here right now, how many of y'all think that Puff is going to jail? If you feel as though Puff going to jail, let me see the dice cubes. If you feel as though he's not going to jail, let me see the thumbs down. Because I got some shit for y'all. See, we talking about Cat Williams, but I got some extra shit for y'all. You know I keep a method to my madness. Iman, you said, my mom is Latina. She hit you with the ch 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 am I said that right? Chanclecha, real quick. She said, I think he gonna gun himself in jail. He gonna kill himself in jail. FTC said he going to jail. Iman, you said he's going to jail. Super said, if he go to jail, I think he getting out. Oh, chancletas. Yeah, that's it. Chancletas. That's the sandals, right? Oh, that's right. That's, that's the chancletas. Got me thinking I'm Spanish. Tu querido. The only Puerto Rican, the only Spanish I knew is in Beach Street. Remember when Ramo? Remember they turned the abandoned building into the house and she and Carmen said, Ramo, just take me out of here. I just want to be with you. They put that song on. Tu querido. That shit is called Ruben's theme song. Doom, do, doom, doom, doom. One of the most beautiful, beautiful love songs. My man Alphonse Arora. Shout out to the Arora family. When he comes in here, y'all can ask him this. I asked him back in the days, yo, Mush, what the fuck was that nigga talking about, man? Do carino. He carino esera. I don't know if I said the shit right, but that's how the shit go. I swear to God, my man Mush said, the dude said that the love that the woman shared, showed him, ever since she started giving him that love, he couldn't see nothing else but that love. He wouldn't even want to live without that love. Boy, you Spanish motherfuckers got some real sexy shit going on with y'all. That's some gangster shit. Tu querido. And I remember back in the days, you go to the Spanish store, they always grabbing their stomach and dancing like this. Hey, what's happening, Bobby? What you want, baby? Hurry up, baby. I'm feeling good. Ah, donko, 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 ding, ding, donko, donko, donko. I never forget Miguel. He used to have the little shockers in the store like this. He can't go binky, panka, for the pop. Hi, I'm here to be said, call him on the way. Hang in, galley, I'm here to be said, on the way, go, be. Swear to God, Telemundo. 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 You are now working with Big Dice and Team Guardian at Telemundo. This is Telemundo. Telemundo TV! I swear to God, you go on them songs back in the them stores back in the days. I ain't even know I liked it, that type of music. I used to go in the store and go, this shit is high. I used to be going to the store to dance and shit. My mother sent me to the store for motherfucking cold clutz. Or a pair of stockings in the morning because she got a hole in her stocking. Boy, go to the store and get me a pair of goddamn stockings. I'm in there listening to the music. Boom, 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 boom. 
I'm eating planton, potato chips, and everything, baby. Bang, 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 Give me an amfadera, man. Give me a ch chicken amfadera. Amfadera, whatever the hell. You know me, man. What you mean, man? Give me them beans and white rice, man. A piece of steak, man. And a little cup of hot sauce. I can go for Hispanic, baby. I'm black, man. I'm from Puerto Rico. See, that's the code word right there. My Spanish man said, yo, you can fool them, Dice. I teach you a little bit of Spanish, but you cannot say Puerto Rico. That's where you fucking up, Dice. Yo, Chief, what up, beloved? My man used to be like, yo, Dice, you fucking up. Niggas ain't gonna know. Because I went to the Puerto Rican Day Parade. I don't give a fuck. I'm up there with the shit on. Pom, 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 pom. Them shits was fire. He said, Dice, stop saying Puerto Rico. I'm like, ain't it Puerto Rico? He said, the P is silent. It's Puerto Rico. He said, I'm Puerto Rican. Not Puerto Rican, Dice. Puerto Rican. Like, instead of saying P, put an H where the P is at. I said, that shit don't make no sense. He says, Puerto Rico. I said, oh, shit. Puerto Rico. That shit sound a little, you know, Puerto Rico. But let me tell y'all something on a serious note. That nigga Puff ain't going to jail. I've been telling y'all this. I'm the only one that told y'all this. He got King Charles, the Queen of Elizabeth grandson, on them tapes, y'all. And I knew the other line when I used to try to talk to the Spanish women. Mi numero de telefono es siete, siete, ocho. Yeah, I used to be on that shit. Como te llamo? Como se llamo? Mi amo, Damon. Tu carino. That's some fucked up shit. I say, Como te llamos? Como se llamos? Mi amo, Damon. I don't know nothing else to say, so I go, Tu carino. You know? Make them laugh. You make them wonk wonk. You make them laugh. You make them wonk wonk. I, that's all I knew, you know. Mi numero de telefono es, you know, I was on some pimping shit. Mi numero de telefono es siete, siete, ocho. Siete, siete, ocho, ocho. Cinco, siete, ocho. When you don't hear me, siete, siete, ocho. Cinco, siete, ocho. Y'all would think I was born in Puerto Rico. But I'm from Brooklyn. But I'm from Brooklyn. But it ain't nothing like a beautiful, a beautiful Hispanic woman in Brooklyn. When it come to Spanish women, when it come to a woman from Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic, I've never seen a pair of Levi's fit a silhouette better than that. Hispanic women, when it come to that motherfucking Levi jean, y'all got that shit mastered. The sisters, I ain't gonna front y'all. I ain't trying to hate on my sisters, but y'all didn't have that waist like the Spanish women. The Spanish women, they had that waist that just was just crazy. Y'all had them silly ass goddamn belts on and you was tightening them, you was pulling them shits real tight where it was overlapping. You was looking like you was on a horse. Them shits ain't look right at the waist. But when it comes to a Hispanic woman, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic with a pair of Levi's on, oh God. That shit had your eyes cocked like a pistol. You just... That shit have your eyes cocked like a pistol. You just see a Spanish woman look... Mi numero de telefono es siete, siete, ocho, ocho, cinco, siete, ocho. That's a fact. But like I told y'all, that nigga Puff, he got a trump card, y'all. I told y'all, remember what I said, Supra? When they told Puff, yo, check this out. We just raided your crib. We got your son and everybody sitting out there locked up on the lawn. We need to talk. That nigga was like, suck cock. I ain't fucking with y'all. Suck cock. I ain't fucking with y'all. Suck cock. I ain't fucking with y'all. That nigga Puff started saying some of them names over the phone. Well, what about such and such? What about such and such? What about such and such? Them niggas said, yo, that nigga started saying some names. I think you better come talk to him. Yo, Puff, we just want to talk to you. Puff like, suck, cock. He said, if y'all niggas keep playing with me, I keep telling you, I bet you he got one of them niggas fucking animals or something. He said, y your nephew, that, remember, we was paying $30,000 a day to get them llamas sent over here from Dubai. 
You got a nephew that like fucking llamas. We gonna put all that shit up on the big screen. They said, all right, Puff, just do what you gotta do. Remember, that shit was so dangerous. Everybody thought Puff was on an island. This nigga so powerful. That nigga sent the money. He fueled up his private jet to go to a fucking island, nigga. Them jets is 30 and 40,000 to fill up, my nigga. That nigga, that nigga blew 50. He said, yo, y'all about to pay for my motherfucking shit. He said, yo, send my plane to my island and make everybody think I'm out there on some witch hunt shit. The next day, this nigga's at a goddamn buffet with, Steven, with, with Stevie J in Miami. Can't make this shit up. They got this nigga at the weed spot. He at the cookie store in Miami talking about he want an eighth of that goddamn Madison Square Garden gumbo. I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. They had the nigga in the weed spot like this with Lou Brock. Then they got the Madison Square Garden gumbo. You see what he said? He said blue 50. I'm talking about $50,000 just to fill up the tank, Super. Don't get timed out already, Super. We only been rocking about 37, 38 minutes, Super. Don't make me show out. You heard what she just said? He's not going out alone. Well, let me let y'all hear something since y'all be forgetting y'all forgot who I am. I'm going to show you who I am right quick. Let me show you who I am right quick. That nigga Puff said, y'all think I'm playing? He said, y'all want to play with my kids? And I guess he said this. See, I be reading into shit. I'm too goddamn analytical. I'm a Virgo, y'all. I think Puff tired of his motherfucking son, too. I think he ready to sacrifice his son. He said, I done wasted too much money on this little nigga. I done got this nigga out of too much shit, and now he acting like he don't know who I am? Take his ass to goddamn jail. He got a little girl that's about three years old. And let me show you what Puff did yesterday. See, a lot of y'all don't be knowing. They be talking, but I be showing. You dig? A lot of y'all don't be knowing. They be talking, but I be showing. Check this out. Did y'all see this one? Fair YouTube usage check this out Sharon McLeod, son. This Sharon McLeod, son. This Sharon McLeod, son. Why they ain't tell? Why they ain't showed y'all this yet? You know why? Because they not up here to inform and to give y'all no information. They not here to give y'all a game like the old timers gave to me. Old timers told me if you see the D van spin the block twice, take your ass in the crib. Put that work down, change your motherfucking clothes, put the work down, and come back outside and see who going to jail. Tell everybody that the van spun twice and go inside and switch up. That's what the OGs told me. When the, when the TNT van keeps spinning, them niggas is trying to send somebody to jail. That nigga Puff ain't playing. You heard that nigga said? Oprah Winfrey. That nigga said, Will Smith. That nigga said, Gabrielle Union. Oh, y'all think Puff playing? Y'all think Puff playing? Puff not fucking playing. Smash that fucking like button. Puff is not playing. Drake. Oh, y'all forgot about that part right there. That's what I wanted y'all to hear again right quick. Guess who he said first? All that bullshit's for the birds. You ain't nothing but a vulture. Ha ha ha. Always hoping for the worst. That nigga gonna name Chris Brown too. That nigga said Drake. You see what he told his daughter? Yo, tell these niggas who gay that. Go tell these niggas who gay. Tell these niggas who daddy got on tape, mama. That nigga Drake is sexier than a pack of cotton candy at Coney Island on Eastern Parkway. 
He got barrettes all up in his head looking like my cousins in the 80. He like my cousin Nikki and them and Tanya and them from Ma 10th Street. I swear to God, look like my Uncle T daughters. They used to be wearing barrettes in their hair like that back in the days. All that bullshit's for the word. Chris Brown too. I told y'all. I told y'all. Let me stop fucking with y'all and let y'all hear this list right quick. This nigga Puff ain't playing. Going to jail. What, he going to jail to see somebody? He going to visit somebody? He ain't going to be incarcerated. Drake. Drake. Oprah. Oprah. J-Lo. J-Lo. A-Rod. A-Rod. Will Smith. Will Smith. <laughs> Alicia Keys. Let's do it again. Go watch the shorts I did with Alicia Keys. I ain't never trust her ass. That bitch is a devil. She's a wicked devil. Just my opinion. Alicia Keys. She always talking about you. Always be my boo. I remember when, when you, when you were mine. Shut the fuck up. I remember when Swiss Beats was that was his was his was his childhood sweethearts before you came around. You done came around, did something strange for some change. You know why Swiss Beats left? You know why Swiss Beats left? Because he don't like women really, and he was tired of paying all the bills because he got them feminine ways too. My opinion, my disclaimer. That's why he was fucking with Alicia Keys. Because he was tired of spending money on his childhood sweetheart. He said, I'm going to get me a chick with some money too. That's why his bitch ass left. She up there talking about, ma, um, ba, um, ba, ma, boo. Shut the fuck up. You and your goddamn diary. Your secrets. Your secrets are safe with me. Shut the fuck up. I knew you was a piece of shit from that song right there. I knew Alicia Keys was a piece of shit from that song right there. No worry, your secret. Shut the fuck up, Alicia Keys. I don't like you. Coming out there looking like a goddamn reptilian in that damn red dress. Looking like you was pregnant, like a kangaroo. Got that man rubbing up all up on you. On the goddamn awards. I don't like that shit, man. Adam's up there going, no, no, no. Whoo. That nigga, Swiss Beats, is Vanilla Spice. You seen him when he came on the show. He said, oh, I think that was one of the most beautiful performances ever. I think they're just hating on my wife because she looked beautiful. They're overlooking the fact that, quote, unquote, they made history. Shut the fuck up. I know D&Y and Y, them niggas from Rough Riders going, we don't co-sign that shit. You ain't never seen D-Girl up in the video rubbing up on nobody, shaking her ass. Puff taking y'all niggas down, man. This nigga Puff is dangerous, man. Listen to all the names. I ain't gonna stop it no more. Drake. Drake. Oprah. Oprah. J-Lo. 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 Will Smith. In today's deep dive on the messy sweet spot, we're unraveling a story so intricate and unsettling, it might just change the way you look at the glitz and glamour of the music industry forever. Before we pull back the curtain on this controversial saga, you know the drill, hit that like button, subscribe, and tap the notification bell. Why? Because this conversation is about to get heated and you'll want to be right in the thick of it. Drop your thoughts, theories, and reactions in the comments below because trust me, you'll have plenty to say. And once we've navigated this stormy sea together, sharing- You heard that? You see that? Super said, who the hell is a Maluma? That's a powerful motherfucker. Whoever Maluma is, they powerful. See that? Iman, you said, that's a Colombian mother. You know that nigga powerful. That's the plug, nigga. 
That's the plug, nigga. That's the plug, man. During this video is a must. Let's spread the word and keep the dialogue alive. The center of today's storm, Sean Diddy Combs, a name synonymous with success in the rap and entertainment world. However, beneath the surface of hit records and high-profile partnerships lies a narrative so dark, it's prompted more than a few to break their silence. It all started with a TikTok revelation that sent shockwaves through social media. An individual, once a young boy, shared his unnerving experience with Diddy involving an invitation to an underwear modeling shoot at the tender age of eight. A yes, you heard that right, eight years old. The implications are as disturbing as they are clear, painting a picture of an industry giant with questions to answer. But this story doesn't stop with a single TikTok video. Oh no, it spirals into allegations so severe they're likening Diddy to the Epstein of the rap world. From lawsuits alleging hidden cameras in mansions to whispers of high profile names being lured into potentially compromising situations, the plot thickens with every detail revealed. And then the bombshell a list released by Diddy himself featuring names that read like a who's who of entertainment royalty, Oprah, JLo, Will Smith, Justin Bieber. The list goes on. This isn't just a list, it's a chess move in a game where the stakes are reputations, careers, and lives. Now, let's not forget the voices that have been trying to warn us. Orlando Brown, Aaron Carter, and even Justin Bieber, whose experiences paint a chilling portrait of vulnerability and exploitation. Each story adds another layer to this complex puzzle, urging us to look beyond the fame and fortune to see the potential darkness lurking beneath. This saga forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about power dynamics, exploitation, and the cost of silence in the face of wrongdoing. It's a wake-up call to not only hold those in power accountable, but to also listen to those brave enough to speak out even when their voices shake. As we navigate this murky narrative, one thing is clear, the need for transparency, accountability, and justice has never been more urgent. This isn't just about one man or one industry, it's about a systemic issue that demands our collective outrage and action. Drake, Drake. Oprah, Oprah. J-Lo, A-Rod, Will Smith, Will Smith. <laughs> Alicia Keys, Alicia Keys. <laughs> Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber. Kevin Hart, do y'all hear them names? Sierra, Janelle Monet. This man is screaming out, y'all. I don't think y'all really paying attention. Do y'all hear the names that this man is screaming out? That little bald head lady, Janae Mano, whatever the hell her name is. And then he laughed. He was like, Yeah, that's my homegirl. How that's your homegirl, Puff? You tell him. How is that your homegirl, Puff? Puff, how is these your home? Puff, this nigga Puff got everybody, man. He got everybody, y'all. Y'all done messed up and fucked with the wrong one, man. Puff got everybody, man. Everybody, man. Do y'all hear the names that he is calling y'all? These ain't regular names he calling y'all. These ain't regular names he calling y'all. These is big, big, big names, y'all. These is not regular names that he is calling, y'all. He is. These are big names, y'all. Like, niggas is, is really about to go down fucking with Puff, man. Pay attention to this shit, y'all. This nigga ain't playing. You see who Naomi Campbell is? You know how long she been in the game, y'all? That's one of the top models. She's so old. She was out when... She was old when she was in New York undercover. And that was 30 years ago. Let's go. Calling? Do y'all hear the names he calling? Rick Ross? 
Are y'all paying attention to the names this man is calling? And you notice they playing funeral music in the background while he's saying these names. Like you're in a damn wait or something. Rest in peace to all them names he calling if they play with this man, yo. Now over to you. What are your thoughts on this unfolding story? How should we as a community respond to these alarming revelations? Dive into the comments below and let's get this conversation started. And remember, by liking, subscribing, and... Are y'all understanding what's going on? This about to be something different. Yo, this about to be something different. This is going to be bigger than the Epstein shit. This gonna be bigger. Smash that like button for this work. This gonna be bigger than the Epstein shit, y'all. This is gonna be bigger than Epstein, man. Ep Epstein ain't got nothing on this. Why can it, why, I wanna know something. You know why they gonna push it to the higher limit? They calling Puffy the new black Epstein. See how they done threw race into that shit too? Epstein was doing it for years. Jeremy Epstein was doing it for years. And then he did too much. They said he living on an island, on one of them islands that he owned. They said that nigga ain't even dead, allegedly. They said that shit was all a motherfucking Ponzi, as they said. Number one, did anybody see him hanging? Any, first of all, did they ever release the video of him hanging in the jail? Anybody in here saw it? Let me know where it's at and tell me what it's under if I can pull it up right now. Anybody see a dead body? I say anybody in here saw the video of him actually hanging in his cell. Because remember, he said he was committed suicide in jail, right? That's what he said? Anybody saw that? Can, I, can, can you tell me where it's at? Put, put the link in the chat, y'all. I told y'all, always a queen, a gangster. That's official. She said, again, a whole fucking rat. Afraid to take his accountability. You can see Puff back in the days wasn't like that, man. I've been saying fuck Puff. See, you want to hear some funny shit? I'm guilty. I'm guilty. This is fucked up what I'm getting ready to say. But I'm guilty. I've been praying that somebody line Puff up in the street like he lined Big up. My opinion only. My disclaimer. I've been praying ever since my man died... Somebody line his bitch ass up like he lined Big up. Big ain't want to go to Cali. Big been getting death threats about going to Cali. And the shit is so fucked up. Big was in love with Kim. This real shit here, I'm telling y'all. Big was in love with Kim. And then Puff manipulated the situation and brought Faith around because Big always liked the light-skinned chick. He always loved him red bones. Think about it. Kim from the hood, she run around looking like Pam from Total with the Jerry Curls, the real Kim. You dig? Shout out to World, who married World from LG. Make a long story short, Puff came around with that. Soon as I get home, that high yellow motherfucking big said. Because of the insecurities within himself, because he was big. Even though he was an impressionable person, he was charismatic. He ain't never had no problems with no women. You dig what I'm saying? But it wasn't like no high yellow one. You know how niggas was back in the days. And then what he did, he manipulated the situation between Big and Faith Evans because he was the one that was bringing the broads to Big. He was the one that was bringing all the women around Big when Big was trying to be the married man. He said, true player for real. Ask Puff, don't leave your girl around me. You hear what Big said? Don't leave your girl around me. True player for real. Ask Puff Dad D. This is facts. 
This is facts. Tribe said, if we knew about it, it's the tip of the old iceberg. They're on to the new schemes. He even, he said, Mr. Epstein's brother doesn't believe how he died. I don't believe that. I'm from Brooklyn. You dig what I'm saying? I don't believe that shit. I'm from Brooklyn. But where I came up and how we came up, it's an old theme song from the show Beretta. I know a bunch of y'all up here over 40. You too, Mimi. You said 41, so you know what I'm talking about. It's an old school movie called Beretta. He say, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Oh, yo. Keep your eye on the sparrow. Y'all don't know nothing about that. That's before y'all time. That's before y'all time. See, everybody now is doing a new thing called cooperating. We ain't, we ain't even know nothing about... Niggas couldn't even spell cooperate. It ain't too many niggas I know that can spell cooperate. Damn near can't spell cooperation. I'm not one of them. C-O-O-P-E-R-A-T-I-O-N. I'm just trying to tell you some of the niggas and the individuals I be around. You dig what I'm saying? I, I don't know too many of my friends that can spell cooperation. This is facts. But they cold-blooded businessmen in the street. They're cold, they're, they're, they're very, very calculated businessmen in the street. Very, very dangerous individuals. They might call me and be like, yo, Dice, check this out. What this shit mean? Because that's what we do. Yeah, what the fuck this shit mean, Dice? One of my cousins, I swear to God, may rest in peace, Sean LeSane. This is the funniest shit ever. He was dealing with a chick uptown. She came down here. She drove his, she drove his Audi, excuse me, back to New York. They got into an argument. She was supposed to come down. She didn't come back down, so we wound up going to New York. We drove the truck up there. I had to drive his truck back. He got like about nine tickets. When we get back to North Carolina, he got tickets because, number one, the license plate on the car is registered to him. So they wrote the tickets to the license plate. So the license plate, the, the, the tickets are going to be sent to the address that's on the insured license plate. So the tickets came to him. All together, it was about maybe... $700, $800 in tickets because she wasn't moving. Like, you know, in New York, when they tell you to get up in the morning, when they got to move the car from side to side, 7.30 or 8.30, she wasn't moving. So he didn't understand. He called me one day and was like, yo, cuz, why the fuck they sending me tickets from New York? And I'm looking at the motherfucking letter and I look, I turned around in the back. See, in the back, when you get a ticket in the mail, that means you didn't pay it. So they're giving you the opportunity to pay it, but they're putting interest on it. So I told him that. I said, first of all, these are old tickets. Look at all these dates. He was like, man, she ain't even tell me nothing about no tickets. Of course she didn't tell you nothing about no tickets. I said, because where you say she live at again? He was like, yo, she live in Brownsville. I said, well, check this out. She's sucking dick in Harlem. Excuse my language to the ladies in the building. He was like, what you mean she's sucking dick in Harlem? I said, because she keep getting tickets on this block right here on 116th Street. All the tickets that she got came from 116th Street, and there were tickets, they were parking tickets. They weren't moving violations. That mean, like I told them, I said, somebody was busting her ass, excuse my language. They had a long night after that African Tongo, and her ass was too lazy, and she didn't give a fuck about the fact of moving a car in the morning because she knew all them tickets, and you would have to pay it because it would go to your life. He said, man, what? I said, in simple plied terms, when she was in New York, she was sucking cow. Just a fact. I ain't knocking her. Prostitution is the Constitution. Shout out to my homegirl, Val. I ain't going to get upset about that shit. If you can get a dollar, holla. Always a queen says she was watching Beretta when the blackout happened. That's right, 1977. That's what she's talking about. I was five years old. 1977, I was five years old. Because I never forget my pops, his friends, all them niggas, they broke into all the stores around Utica Avenue except the one on the corner block. I swear to God, them niggas had so many cigarettes. They had so many cartons of cigarettes, and my pops and them had found guns. Facts of life. Facts of life. But you know what? I'm going to get to the next part of the story. Anybody know who this is right here? Let me see if y'all know who this is right here. Let me see if y'all know who this is. I'm telling you, Super, if you fuck up, if you fuck up on this one, Super, 
if you fuck up on this one, Super, I'm telling you, Super, I'm timing your ass out for 30 minutes. Now, we're going to try this again. Super, who this is, my man? Talk to me, Super. Come on, Super. I'm believing in you, Super. You're not old, always a queen. You vintage, girl. What would y'all rather have? A two-day-old bottle of wine or a 60-year-old bottle of wine? I'll take the 60-year-old bottle of wine. That's the fact. Thank you. Thank you, Super. And he did it right. He said, this nigga Dice will time me out. So he said, cat. Then he said, Williams right behind it. Thank you, Supra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Supra. See that? I ain't got to change my hat. I, I can keep on my Tiger Woods golf hat. I can keep on my Tiger Woods golf hat. You dig what I'm saying? You dig what I'm saying? I can keep my Tiger Woods golf hat on. Nice Nike shirt. Tiger Woods golf hat. I don't got to put on the bucket hat. I'm trying to be civilized for y'all today. Shout out to my man FCC, Fast Cash Class, and Let's Go For Life, the number one web series on YouTube. I had them up here. I interviewed them up here. Shout out to Fast Cash Class, the top op reek, Jonathan, the Mr. BBW man, Mr. 300, you dig what I'm saying? And the part two is coming. But that nigga Cat Williams... Everybody said Cat Williams was a hater. Even back in the days with the movie called Friday After Next. Friday After Next, did y'all ever see when he made Ricky Smiley cry? Ricky Smiley was running around the industry talking about Cat Williams was trying to be like him and take his jokes. Making it seem like Cat Williams was the one that was lesser of importance in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. That's what he was trying to do. But he didn't know who Cat Williams was. So what Cat Williams did is, Cat Williams said, check this out. And he did this, and he proved it, but nobody listened to him. He said, since the nigga Ricky Smiley want to talk so much from now on, no pity, I see you in the building. Denial is in the building. Miss Pam is here too. Shout out to Wax AP. Cat Williams told him, he said, from now on, since the nigga running behind my back, you know how Cat talk, since he want to talk behind my back, he said, from now on, the only way that Cat Williams said he would be in a movie with Ricky Smiley is if Ricky Smiley was in a dress. And then you notice they did a movie with Ice Cube and Tracy Morgan robbing the church and everything like that. Ironically, Cat Williams was in the movie. Ricky Smiley was in the movie also, but he played an old woman. He played an old woman. Mimi said, yo, I'm working from home today. She said, I'm going to have to finish this later. Not too much being done right now. I appreciate that, girl. See, there ain't nothing but love. Spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. Spread that love and get all the good people with that great spirit and tell them to come over here. We're building a great family over here. We don't want no sucker shit over here. We not disrespecting each other over here. It ain't about no color over here. It ain't even about no sexual preference over here, y'all. Matter of fact, I don't know for the newcomers that came here. For the newcomers that came here, I didn't say that. To the new people that came here, it's not even about a sexual preference over here. Word up, because let, let, I want this to be known. If you are a gay man, if you are a lesbian woman, and you stand on your truth, I respect that. Big Dice stamped that. But the ones that I don't respect, and I think, not trying to sound funny, they should be stoned to death, is the dudes that act like they're straight heterosexual men and they be on the down low. And then on the top of the fact that they be on the down low, they be having the audacity to disrespect people that are living in their true light. Even though I don't agree with that, they're living in their true light. I think it takes more of a confidence within yourself to live in your light as being a gay man or a lesbian woman. Shout out to the LGBTQT. And the reason why I say this is I'm going to have to shout them out because they here. It's all about respect, y'all. It's all about respect. When you got two consensual Adults doing things consensually, it's not my motherfucking, <laughs> I can't get on that. When you're when you bothering them children, 
when you're sexually assaulting people, when you're taking advantage of people, when like this bullshit with these celebrities, they're date rating people, they putting concoctions in their alcohol that's making them pass out. Nah, that's crazy. Nah, that's crazy. That's cold crazy. And I can't knock nobody for their sexual preference. When it comes to homosexuality, the only thing I say about it is, I was always told God is good, God is great. And God is an entity that will never, ever make a mistake. God is good, God is great. God is one of the entities that will never, ever make a mistake. So when I talk to my people, whether you're gay or whether you're a lesbian or so forth or so forth, I look back to the fact and I think, and I always ask a question because I have family members that are gay. And I've had conversations with them. Not judgmental conversations, just curious conversations because we're family. Because usually certain things come from what I know and what I've spoke to my family about is from when adults took advantage of children. When adults took advantage of children or adults, instead of being parents, exposed their children to certain things that children were not supposed to see. I'm seeing relationships now where they got babies growing up in households with two women. I got babies growing up in households with two men interacting with each other as couples. I can't knock nobody for loving each other, but you got I can knock you for the impression that you're putting in a child, especially during their imperative years. Like the situation with Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union with the way that he was encouraging his son to have this operation. I think that's one of the most sadistic things that I've ever seen from a parent. But that's not my child. So everybody and anybody is more than welcome to come over here as long as you come over here with respect. As long as you come over here with not disrespecting each other. As long as whatever you've seen in another chat, you let that stay in another chat. Because that's the first way you will get shot up out of here. Coming over here talking about what's going on in another chat. Boom! I beat them blue. I, yo, my gun go fast too. Even though my shooters... We got people in here that will shoot you around the park, like down here, like they say. We give you a little five second or ten second. No, that's for the people that got love. But when you playing, we will ging you around. Bing, 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 bing. Give you a five minute, a six minute, a ten minute, maybe a half an hour. Or 86,000 seconds, which is 24 hours. Because that means maybe you get an hour to get your mind right when you want to come back over here and deal with some adults. If you don't have no adults, we don't deal with it. We have to act accordingly with each other and respect each other as who we are. It's not about no color. We all a human race. We all bleed the same thing. But everybody jumped on Cat Williams like he was a hater. And he was a liar. But everything Cat Williams was saying is coming to truth, just like Jaguar. Listen to what Cat had to say, y'all. Let's go. No matter if you did or whoever you is. TGJ, any of them, every all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. After his initial revelation is looking truer as the day goes by, Cat Williams has dropped more details as regards the controversy surrounding Puff Diddy. And this time, it's not just verbal details, but leaks of secret fails of his freak off parties. I'm a spike, sir. Like all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was. It's generally known that Sean Diddy Combs' freak off parties aren't just like all other parties, but are top tier that feature the most popular and renowned names and celebrities. While it remains unknown where Cat Williams gets all his details from, the recent happenings have proven that Cat Williams is one that can be trusted whenever he leaks anything, and he has just leaked secret tapes of Diddy's freak off parties. Let's forge ahead. Cat Williams was heavily criticized. Y'all see Drake back there just now looking like like sexual chocolate. Names and celebrities. While it remains unknown where Cat Williams gets all his details from, the recent happenings have proven that Cat Williams is one that can be trusted whenever he leaks anything, and he has just leaked secret tapes of Diddy's freak off parties. Let's forge ahead. Cat Williams was heavily criticized after he welcomed millions of people into the new year with the most controversial interview anyone could think of on the Club Shay Shay interview. 
Cat Williams made so many shocking revelations that the interview had garnered tens of millions of viewers after just a few days. It was so controversial that fans and several celebrities like Kirk Franklin and Ice Cube also shared their opinions. The interview, however, resurfaced after Sean Diddy Combs' homes in Los Angeles, New York City, and Miami were raided over a week ago, with fans quickly taking to Twitter to air their claims. One user wrote, Cat Williams... Did y'all just see that? Did y'all just see that? That was Justin Bieber coming up from giving Odell Beckham some sloppy toppy in the club. I want y'all to pay attention to Justin Bieber face. Like, what the fuck are you doing, guy? He's warned you, us, them, everyone. Another commented, Cat Williams warned people. Wells Fargo. I got it has provided $5.6 million to help launch financial health initiatives at HBCUs. YouTube won't get no money off me for their commercials. No, they won't. No, they won't. Smack that like button if y'all having a great show, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. It's where the grown-ups hang out, man. For real. For real. A third then added millions of viewers after just a few days. It was so controversial that fans and several celebrities like Kirk Franklin and Ice Cube Pay also shared their Justin opinions. Bieber, the interview, however, resurfaced after Sean Diddy Combs' homes in Los Angeles, New York City, and Miami were raided over a week ago, with fans quickly taking to Twitter to air their claims. I want y'all to pay attention to Justin Bieber's face when he come up down there from having a sausage party. Uh oh, did y'all see that? You just seen Odell Beckham do the motion like he was pulling up his sweats or something like that. Did you see the look on Justin Bieber's face like, hey, why would you do that, man? What the fuck are you doing, man? We're over here in the party just minding our business. He's over there having a ball sandwich. Have an extra Glico sauce, shout out to 050 China Brim. He's over there having a Glico sandwich by himself. He's having a Glico sandwich about himself. And they came over there and got him on tape. And he's upset. He's upset. Check him out now. Check him out. Oh, y'all notice that's, that's T.I. right there. And that's Steve Stout behind him. This is T.I. That's Steve Stout. They had one of Puff parties too. Let's get right, y'all. One user wrote, Cat Williams warned you, us, them, everyone. Another commented, Cat Williams warned people, but no one wanted to listen. A third then added, and a third added, Cat Williams warned Diddy in January that his time was up. Now Diddy is set to even cause more stir in the pop world with his latest release on secret videos. In a now deleted post on social media that seems so much like a response to Stevie J's post, where the very close pal of Sean Diddy Combs posted a video of one of Diddy's parties with countless celebrities in attendance, over 600 of them, and he added the caption, this is what a Diddy party looks like. However, in what seemed like a response to Stevie J's post, Cat Williams released a video of the real secrets and the largely unknown details about Sean Diddy Combs' parties. Before deleting the post, Cat Williams posted the video on his social media account, adding the caption, What a Diddy party truly looks like. More to come. It's been claimed by many that perhaps Cat Williams deleted the post because many of the details were offensive and may not be too appropriate for tender viewers. What? However, others have said he probably received threats from big names and other celebrities found in the video as it was deleted just a few minutes after it was posted. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do. In the video, Diddy was seen having a hot romantic moment at Young Miami, while another scene showed Diddy and Meek Mill fondle, grope and touch each other as they dance to a song on top of each other. Another scene showed Young Miami's cousin and a prostitute having an intercourse while Diddy watched. There were also scenes where Diddy, in the company of many other top celebrities, was seen taking hard drugs and sharing it with the others around. Sadly, it remains unknown why Cat Williams decided to delete the video after he made the post. 
to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to say the record straight. Win winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any. It is Kat. Now, y'all know what's about to happen right now. If anybody know what's about to happen right now, tell me what I'm getting ready to do because I had to put my hat on. If anybody know me, tell me what's about to happen right now. Supra is about to get it. He gets it. He's on timeout. We're giving him a minute for that one. He's jumping straight to 60 seconds for that one. This nigga talking about poor Meek. He ain't want to do it. Laugh out loud. He talking about. See, this is the thing. Why are cameras there? I know this stuff is blackmail, but paparazzi ain't supposed to be at these parties. It's supposed to be some elite members. Ain't no paparazzi. That's Cat Williams saying he letting them tapes out. He said, that's why I be feeling like a lot of these things are supposed to be seen and the people involved are scrambling to get attention. Hell yeah, they scrambling to get attention. That's why they doing them things that they doing something strange for a little bit of change. See, you made me put the hat on. That's why. That nigga Meek in the sounding like Amy, bad gorilla. He in the this nigga sounding like a seal. Talking about chill puff, chill puff. This nigga's in the room sounding like a bad transmission, like a bad starter on a car. Fuck all them niggas. Do you know I got every Meek Mill album? Do you know I've been listening to Meek Mill since the mixtape? Dream chasers. Do y'all know I've been fucking with this nigga since Dream Chasers CD, man? Since Tony? And he did this to me? He did this to me, Super? He did this to me? Dream chasers? Dreams and nightmares. He did this to me. I got every Meek Mill album he ever had. Mixtapes and all. This nigga had me believing he was the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But now I got to look at it just like my mother told me something a long time ago. Because this ain't just started happening. She said, I'm going to watch Congo tonight. Bagoella, Amy Bagoella. He did what I told people they doing, man. He did it. He sold his soul, y'all. He sold his soul. And now, yo, check this out. Y'all don't even notice. Now, he's part of the people that sue and puff. I can't make this shit up. I can't, I can't make this shit up. Now he's he's part of the people suing Puff. He's part of the people that suing Puff. He's suing Puff for leaking the tape. He's saying that Puff purposely leaked the tape of them two in a little sexual encounter to get the spotlight off of him and throw it on Meek Mills. Ain't that some shit? I've been fucking with Meek for a minute, y'all. But then again, like my mother said, Freddie Jackson is a homosexual. Luther Vandross, rest in peace, was a homosexual. My mother said, he ever come through Utica Avenue, I'm going to straighten his ass out. People fail to realize just because of your sexual preference does not mean you're not a genius when it comes to music. Look at R. Kelly. That nigga's crazy. A lot of people, y'all didn't understand R. Kelly told y'all years ago. He told y'all after 1998 with the sex tapes, when he came out with the 40, what, 46 chapter? That shit called Trapped in the Closet? Trapped in the Closet. Do y'all know how much money that nigga made off that shit and he couldn't even spell?
Let's get into this Cat Williams, man. Caption. Cat Williams had indicated that there was more to come, possibly because he had so many more videos in his custody. And it is expected that Cat Williams release such videos again in the coming days, as he has recently become a trusted source of information and gossip. All this trust definitely stemmed from his revelations in January. Cat Williams, the sharp-witted comedian, took to the spotlight and appeared on the Club Shay Shay podcast about three months ago to share his perspective on allegations involving Diddy. In the interview, Williams definitely set the record straight on a few things. He made a few statements on the podcast, which have been swirling on social media and several other issues, including accusing Cedric the Entertainer of stealing his Man, very- check this out. This nigga looking like Charleston White. That nigga looking like Charleston White right there, y'all. Including accusing Cedric the Entertainer of stealing his very best joke and last joke in the 90s. However, in a statement that captured attention and sparked discussions, Will- Hey, did you hear about this? There's a free $5,800 spending card going out to migrants. He's penchant for partying. In his own distinct opinion, Cat Williams revealed, P. Diddy wants to party, and you've got to tell him no. I did. I got the receipts. The statement immediately generated interest and speculation among fans and followers. However, the use of the term got the receipts added a layer of authenticity to Cat Williams' assertion, suggesting that there was tangible evidence or a history to support his claim. Moreover, his statements caused further speculation since Diddy's allegations of sexually abusing Cassie also made headlines in recent months. As you can probably recall, Diddy was hit with a bombshell $30 million lawsuit. Y'all should knew something was funny about him right now. Let me tell you something. Ladies, let me tell you something. Y'all may think I'm joking over this shit. You see what he got on? This nigga got on a leopard print. If you want to turn me off, wear leopard print. This is a cold-blooded fact. I've been like this since a kid. If you want to turn me off, if you could be one of the most beautiful women in the world, I could have been fantasizing about sucking on your kneecaps with peanut butter and jelly. If you have a piece of material with a leopard front on it, I never fuck with you. I know that shit may sound like the craziest shit in the world, y'all. This right here, this leopard shit, this leopard shit right here, this shit right here, this, 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 this print right here, right there, that's a feminine print, number one. Number one, that's a feminine print right there. This nigga got on a leopard print with a mink collar. He, he think he's styling, but he's showing you right now he's voguing. This is RuPaul's brother right here. This is Sean Paul. And I ain't talking about the Jamaican singer. Every boy I'm on your mind. I ain't talking about that nigga. Girl, them want to say... I'm not talking about girl them want to say. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Sean Paul, RuPaul, little brother. That's who this is. That leopard print right there is one of the most disgusting prints ever. I hate that shit. I wouldn't care if it was an all in body one thong and you had the baddest body ever. Once I see this right here, I am gone. I hate that shit. This is from a child. I hate that shit. I hate it. I hate it. Ladies, I don't know what it is about that shit. If you got a leopard, yo, and you know what? I went to somebody's house one time back in the days and she had a leopard curtain set and a leopard couch. I like to throw up. I can't make this shit up, Miss Pam. I like to throw up. When she opened the door and I came, this is in Linden Houses, when I make, cause you gotta walk down the hallway and make the left. When I walk down the hallway, when you make the left, you see the kitchen, you see the living room. She was like, go ahead and have a seat. When I turned around to the left, y'all, I saw a leopard curtain set and a leopard love seat in the couch. I almost threw up. I'm dead ass serious, y'all. Forgive me. I'm a, I'm a picky person. I'm bougie. I ain't gonna front. You're always a queen. Y'all already know. Y'all already know I'm bougie. I'm bougie. I'm real picky when it comes, I don't give a fuck. I'm picky when it comes to everything from chicken wings to pit bulls to women. I'm real. I'm just not going to be around anything. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Forgive me for that. I come from her. I come from her. And these two right here, if one thing my grandmother and grandfather didn't teach me, if you're going to be with somebody, be with somebody that compliments you. Be with somebody that compliments you and be with somebody that adds to your peace. These people right here, my grandfather was a handsome man and my grandmother was a beautiful woman. Some of, some people say she looked like Lena Horne. You dig what I'm saying? See, I'm real bougie, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I'm just real, real bougie. I can't help that shit. That's, that's, I guess I get that from my moms. Forgive me. Let's get into this Cat Williams shit. Forgive me.
couple months ago that accused him of various terrible acts. Cassie, who filed the lawsuit, claimed that he exerted control over her life, including threatening to hold back her career. Allegedly, this led to a frightening type of relationship that was marked by abuse. However, by Williams addressing Diddy's partying tendencies, the comedian pretty much verified his own experience with the music mogul and having to tell him no on certain occasions. As the quote circulated on social media and various platforms, fans engaged in discussions, sharing their interpretations and reactions. Cat Williams's candidness not only added an intriguing angle to the ongoing narrative, but also showcased the unfiltered nature of his commentary. Williams also called out Cedric the Entertainer for allegedly plagiarizing a joke he created verbatim, which Williams performed during comedy sets and on BET's Comic View in the 1990s. He moved on and also called comedian Kevin Hart an industry plant, alleging his success has not been organic because he already had movie deals when he got to Los Angeles and no one in Hollywood has a memory of a sold out Kevin Hart show. In your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you. In addition, Williams discussed rejecting certain demands in exchange for opportunities, stating in one instance, disgraced film producer and convicted sex offender Harvey Weinstein offered to perform oral sex on him. And in another, he rejected sexual favors and turned down a $50 million opportunity to protect my integrity, adding he refused to take shortcuts to success. Furthermore, he called out Steve Harvey, alleging he plagiarized the premise of Mark Curry's sitcom Hanging with Mr. Cooper for The Steve Harvey Show and said Harvey couldn't be a movie star because he doesn't have range and looks like Mr. Potato Head. Williams also said Ricky Smiley was lying about Williams' role in Friday After Next, originally being intended for him instead, adding he put a clause in his contracts that he would not work with Smiley moving forward unless he's in a dress because him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to say... Have you heard of this brand new product that instantly cleans toilets without any scrubbing? Yo, I want y'all to pay attention to what this man said. Yo, this nigga Cat is gangster, y'all. I want y'all to pay attention to what Cat said. That nigga said from now on, since Ricky Smiley was running his mouth and he needs some money, if he gonna be in a movie with me, that nigga gotta wear a motherfucking dress. The proof in his eyes, the bitch that he feel is is. He said when it comes to Ricky Smiley and Tyler Perry, them niggas couldn't play a man in a movie to save their fucking life. Now, let me ask y'all something right quick. Is it just my opinion that Ricky Smiley has a better... He made me laugh when he was playing the old woman from the church. Is it just me? The old woman from the church with the wig and the glasses? And let's be real, Tyler Perry has had a couple of movies where he tried to be a man and a detective and all that bullshit. Is it just me that the only way that I could watch Tyler Perry and really believe him is if he plays Medea? Is it just me? Is it just me, y'all? That's a fact. That's her name, always a queen. Sister O, that's his name, Sister Odell. I thought that was my great aunt that passed away. I thought my aunt went somewhere. I thought that was my aunt. But when it come to Tyler Perry, remember when he had the movie when he was a detective? That shit was a weird-ass movie, y'all. Now, if you'd have put Denzel in that motherfucker or, 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 you know what I'm saying, or Morgan Freeman or Samuel L. Jackson, shit, you could have even gave it a little sexy-ass Jamie Foxx. He would have played a better version of that. But that nigga Tyler Perry, I just see a woman. He mind-fucked us. He the first one that walked, walked in cross-dressing. He fucked our brains up. Because we like to laugh. Because we like to laugh. That nigga fucked us up with the Medea plays. Fucked us up. Then he fucked our kids up. Coming out with movies. The same Medeas hitting the motherfucking big air like that. The big movie screen. Alex Cross. That nigga, that should have been Alexa Cross. He should have dressed up like Medea, Alexa Cross. That should have been the name of the movie. You see, that's a fact. You see what Darielle said? They even portrayed that shit in the boondocks about how that nigga was talking about you want to be in this movie, you know what you got to do, huh? He walking around with niggas looking like bodyguards with thongs on. That should have been Alexa, Alexa Cross. Let's get into this work. I'm just starting. Furthermore, he called out Steve Harvey, alleging he plagiarized the premise of Mark Curry's sitcom Hanging with Mr. Cooper for The Steve Harvey Show, 
and said Harvey couldn't be a movie star because he doesn't have range and looks like Mr. Potato Head. Williams also said Ricky Smiley was lying about Williams' role in Friday After Next, originally being intended for him instead, adding he put a clause in his contracts that he would not work with Smiley moving forward unless he's in a dress because him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. He claimed he was canceled for talking about allegations against Michael Jackson and R. Kelly because they are black men. But Williams doubled down, stating it don't matter if you Diddy, who was accused by four women of sexual assault late last year. In the ever-evolving landscape of celebrity news and social media, Cat Williams' statement became a notable moment. The humor, authenticity, and directness in his words throughout the entire interview left a mark on society. Furthermore, he contributed to the ongoing conversation surrounding Diddy's questionable lifestyle, which has undoubtedly caused another stir on socials. The reactions came from not just fans, but celebrities as well. Things that have never been heard in all of Black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you on Friday after next. The one I was in, I <laughs> wish all. Oh. Kirk Franklin was mentioned by Cat Williams in his infamous interview and shared his thoughts on the name drop. In the explosive interview released, Cat kicked off the conversation by saying, this is about to be the opposite of Kirk Franklin praying, referencing Kirk's prior interview on the platform. And when Jeremy Hecht caught up with the singer on the red carpet at the 2024 Grammy Awards, he asked Kirk Franklin about his initial reaction to Cat's joke. You just shake your head. It's like, Lord have mercy, because I don't know where it's going, he laughed. But shout out to Cat Williams. I just think that there are so many voices right now that are having the opportunity to speak about their journey, their experiences, Kirk Franklin said. He continued, and I just think that it's important for everyone to have a platform to tell the truth and their story. I don't think anybody should be silenced. Anybody should be censored. I think that every human being has the right to tell their voice and their story. Released on January 4th, Cat Williams' appearance on Club Shay Shay truly set the internet ablaze with his unfiltered comments about everyone from Diddy to Trick Daddy to Ludacris to Ice Cube and beyond. When asked about the pay disparity other actors have complained about while working on the Friday franchise, Cat came to Cube's defense, noting that he was a black man trying to make movies without a big budget, and people shouldn't have expected a huge payday. Taking on an X space with a nearly 10-minute video the following day, Ice Cube addressed the Club Shay Shay interview and confirmed most of what Cat said was true. Although Cube did want to clear up a couple of discrepancies, in short, he said that the role of Money Mike was already written, but Cat added his flair to it. He confirmed that Ricky Smiley did try out for the role first, but they later gave it to Cat after his audition, and he denied that there was ever a rape scene in the film. Cube went on to explain that the role of Money Mike was written as a much smaller part, but Cat's ad-libs and freestyled lines enhanced it so much that they kept adding more of him to the script. But as far as the alleged rape scene, Cube said that was never a thing. Cat Williams has become the latest one to again reveal unknown details about Sean Diddy Combs, adding more chaos to an already controversial issue. I feel comfortable sitting here lying to you on Friday after next, the one I was in. <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 104 times. Four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, that he man, Cat Williams, said, I did that just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole that I was telling y'all about. And he be wanting to body. It is the hope of many that Sean Diddy Combs is truly exposed for his hidden crimes and he faces judgment alongside many others involved in dirty crimes in the world of pop. The story keeps unfolding and you wouldn't want to miss any part of it. That's all for now on the latest celebrity news and gossip. For more updates on events, moments, and celebrity news in the entertainment industry, stay connected with us. Yo, when I tell y'all right now, when I tell y'all right now that it's going down, it's going down. And it's only the first part of the show, man. Word up. This goes out to all, all of the people out there that's putting the devil first. This goes out to all the people that's putting the devil first now. This is a fair warning. This is a fair warning. And shout out to my man CB for putting a little fire on Way to Black right quick. If y'all don't know who Way to Black is, that's the bro, you dig what I'm saying? This is one of his singles, but this is the warning I'm giving the people. You better get back to this content and start spreading love. This is one. This is one. I'm feeling like. This is one. 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 This
Imagine how I felt. You ain't never seen a key eat. Pussy nigga couldn't beat me. Put this shit on repeat. Protocol, get the shooting. Robbing, looting, spinning, shooting, shooting. Predicate, stupid, stupid, scarface, ruthless. Yeah, wait up. Eat your pussy in a Uber. Mommy said she wanna see it. I told that bitch get a ruler. Wait up. Send a shooter for the shooter. The bitch something she a master. Shoot the sergeant in the captain. Suck a fat like what's cracking. Snap a finger. Niggas clap them. Lay like you fuckers on the ground. Son of Rose, I don't fuck around. One, one, shot, shot, two. This is shot. Acting like you was claiming, nigga. Y'all niggas want to claim when I see y'all niggas, man. The three building. See y'all niggas in the beat. I saw y'all niggas in the beat, man. What y'all was doing? No riding. You know what? Listen, what? This is a war. I'm not jacking. None of that. No shit. I'm trying to tell y'all niggas. This is a war. Yo. Brooklyn shit, man. Yeah. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Wait, I'm feeling wavy. Wait. Life's a bitch, nigga, trust me. Yes. She about to have my baby. Uh, yeah. 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 Need Bugattis and Mercedes. Yeah. I gave it up to God. Yeah. But that nigga couldn't save me. No. Uh, uh, wait, I'm wait. Yeah, they hate me, yeah, they hate me. Hey. Cause don't keep a grip. In case I wanna trip, chicks wanna rape me. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Scary, scary. scary. Dripping. Michael and Mary. Man. Wait, wait, I, yeah, I be talking. Yes. But you niggas, you don't hear me. Yeah. Spaceship, see the stars, yeah. What? I ain't really wanna start there. Yeah. Motherfuckers got one shot. I'm with the blood clot, he'll be right here. I'm a rhyme like he right here. Got a buzz, call me light, yeah. Shooting me, then I'm shooting back. Super fact, that's quite clear. Little nigga with a gun. Blocker, 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 blocker. Gun bigger than Chewbacca. Blocker, 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 blocker. Yeah, yeah. You know what's cracking when I pop up. Gun smoke to the blocker. Lick a shot for my shot. Show the ass getting fat. Yeah, yeah. One time for my shot. Acting like you was playing, nigga. You shout it out the way to black and he just dropped the new mixtape. You dig what I'm saying? But you know what? This thing right here with Puff Daddy, I don't know if y'all remember when they was raiding his homes. Pay attention. They was locking up a drug mule. I did some investigating on this. You know, I like to give a good show. You know what I'm saying? I like to let people know, you know what I'm saying? Feel a little more informed about the things that's going on because everybody's talking about the new verge of the pink cocaine. And then I did some investigating work on it. It's not pink cocaine. It's actually not pink cocaine. And it's three times to four times more expensive than cocaine. It's not cocaine. It's something called Tusi. Tusi? Cold-blooded fat. And the bulk part about it is, see, this is what is making Puff look more and more and more worse. Because if I did my, my research on it, I know the government, Homeland Security, you ain't never heard of that shit. You heard of the ATF. You heard of the... Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, that's guns. You heard about DEA. You heard about drug enforcement agents. You heard about the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. You heard about the SBI, the Southern Bureau of Investigation. But that nigga, them niggas sent, H, the back of them jackets said H-S-I. That's Homeland Security, nigga. Investigators. That's something different. That's the name of it always, the queen. HSS, Homeland Security, them niggas come with the plastic handcuffs. That's cartel shit. But you know what I said I was going to bring it to my good people? I want y'all to pay attention to this new wave. But the crazy part about it is this is what's going to be crazy and it's not looking so good for Puff. Number one, this shit is used in the straight up transgender world. 
that Vogue, that boom, 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 boom. Holla! Can you get up? They, they sniffing that shit. Let's get into this work right quick. Fair YouTube usage. You dig what I'm saying? Make sure everybody know where you heard it first. We trying to get into something different. Grown folks conversation over here, y'all. Let's go. If you're still putting regular white cocaine up your nose, you're basically living in the 90s. Check this out. If you're still putting regular white cocaine up your nose, you're basically living in the 90s. From Medellin's elite clubbers to the cartel queens that run the underworld here, everyone who's anyone in Colombia right now is snorting pink cocaine, also known as Chusy B. El tusi acá en Medellín es más importante que la coca. It's fashionable, it's six times expensive as regular white cocaine, it has its own genre of music, and it's so popular that it's even spawned a whole new generation of narcos. La fiesta depende del tusi, el tusi depende de la fiesta. QCB is taking over Colombia, and the word is that cartels here are expanding to Europe. They've set up labs in Spain, so if you haven't seen it already, expect to see it in Ibiza this season. Well, no. Although it is pink, it most certainly isn't cocaine. In fact, very few people who take this drug have any idea what's really in it. The confusing thing is that the word 2CB is kind of like a Latinization of 2CB, a psychedelic phenethylamine invented by Alexander Shulgin in the 1970s that feels a bit like LSD mixed with MDMA, lasts two to three hours, and was famously referenced on the Kanye track, Yikes. But in Colombia, 95% of samples have shown that 2CB here contains no 2CB. So... Now let me see if y'all already know about this work and y'all know about y'all movies. They told us about 2CB in a movie in the 90s and people didn't pay attention to it. Can anybody take a guess? The movie that they told us about 2CN? They told us about 2CB, excuse me. It wasn't called 2C back then. It was called 2CB. Pay attention. I'm going to give you another hint. They called it a synthetic cocaine that was more potent than the real cocaine and a scientist it was a scientist that that created this shit y'all remember the movie deep cover with Lawrence Fishburne deep cover with Lawrence Lawrence Fishburne and I don't know the Spanish guy name but he played um he was in Sanford and Son. He played um, Julio in Sanford and Son. He played, his name was Victor Barbosa in the movie. Deep cover. Remember they robbed the plug? And they told him they would need a certain amount of money to make this new thing called, with the two CBs that's... <whistles> they was telling us about this back in the days. Let's get into this work, y'all. But this right here is supposedly for the, for the, for the, for the party side. It's kind of just like, what is this drug? To try to find out, we're gonna go hang out with some people who actually use it. Kim Zuluaga is kind of a trans icon in Colombia, and her and her so-called butterflies had a huge- so You heard that? This is a transgender woman, and she is an icon out there. So everybody pay attention. This is a man that y'all look, excuse me, no disrespect intended to the LGBTQ plus, but this is a man that controls the market out there with this shit. Pay attention. These is all men, y'all. Bit like LSD mixed with MDMA last two to three hours and was famously referenced on the Kanye track, Yikes. But in Colombia, 95% of samples have shown that 2CB here Facts. contains no 2CB. Facts, FTC. So it's kind of just like, what is this drug? To try to find out, we're gonna go hang out with some people who actually use it. Kim Zuluaga is kind of a trans icon in Colombia, and her and her so-called butterflies have a huge social media following. They're also Guaracha DJs, and Guaracha is this kind of psychedelic reggaeton style music that's heavily influenced by TCB. Oh, 
Hoy tenemos una rumba de guaracha y vamos a ir a Lucheras. Cuando uno consume tusi y está en una fiesta de guaracha o, o escucha guaracha, eh, los sonidos de la guaracha Yo están sí, diseñados para que cuando uno esté drogado con el tusi, la mente alucine y sienta como muchas más sensaciones. Creo que es como una combinación de muchas drogas sintéticas en polvo. Pero pues en sí, en sí, no, nosotros no sabemos qué. Y el tusi te da sensaciones mejores que la coca. La coca está pasada de moda, porque el, el tusi te hace sentir feliz. La mayoría de los jóvenes están inclinando más por el tusi. Sí. Oh, I thought that was makeup. <risa> hace parte de, de nosotras antes de salir, pues nos gusta darnos unos cuantos pasecitos para entrar en ambiente. <risa> ¿Quieres? Uh, no, gracias. How does the GCP feel? Como una muñeca de cera derretida, pues no sé, algo tan... Porque hay veces que le echan mucho LSD, entonces uno se derrite. After several bumps of Tusi, Kim took us to a Guaracha club, where she was booked to DJ. The large groups of people getting into toilet cubicles together, pink rings on nostrils, and cheerful silliness made it apparent that most people here were on Tusi. Kim just disappeared and left me at the club, so we've had outside to just ask some random people what they think about GCB. This How nigga scared to death. He pussy. Y'all heard him, y'all? That nigga's pussy. Excuse my language, y'all. He said Kim just disappeared and left me at the club, so we're just gonna walk around and ask people about this drug. These people are crazy. But he's a hell of a journalist, because I wouldn't be out there asking about no Tusi, no Ducey, or no Drusy, and I damn sure wouldn't be running around with no Fruity. Popular is Tusi in Medellín. O sea, realmente, o sea, o sea, o sea, o sea, es como en cualquier parte, llega alguien y te ofrece Tusi. Why is it so popular in Medellín? No sé, yo pienso que toda la narcocultura. Que es fácil de conseguir. And what do you think is in Tusi? Like, yeah, what's it made of, yeah. Well, what I heard is like tomato flavor. First of all, this nigga's crazy. Yeah, I know I'm gonna talk my shit. I don't care. This nigga's crazy. You gonna talk to a nigga that got a devil on his head and some Eddie Munster ears with a tight ass t shirt on with a choking neck? You asking to get raped. They gonna do something to you, man. They are gonna hold you down. And they're gonna be like, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of all. You don't be playing with nobody that's sniffing no Tusi. Let me explain something to you. Mimi said he an elf. Mimi, he could be Shaka Khan. I'm from Brooklyn. If I'm in the street, yo, if I see somebody walk by looking like an elf, I'm gonna keep it funky with you. I'm gonna be startled. Yeah, Big Bag Dice gonna tell the truth, y'all. I'm gonna be startled, Mimi. Then, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make sure I got one in the head. I'm gonna avoid contact, Mimi. Check me out, check me out. Your boy ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna look him in his eyes. But my left eye, out of my peripheral vision, is gonna be paying attention to his movements. When I'm walking past him, I'm gonna be saying the 23rd Psalm. This is how I'm gonna be walking. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. I'm gonna start thinking about what my grandmother told me to do because I don't want to have to kill me a nigga. Because he would startle me. I done been through some shit. I done, I done been through some shit, y'all. But I ain't never went to war with no motherfucking elf. You dig what I'm saying? I ain't seen no elf in real life. I seen elves on TV. You heard what she said, don't trust them fairies. You heard my man Imanu said, he said, yo, them drug strangers all the time in Colombia called drug borengua, bo, borang, boranga, boranga. It comes from Jimson weed seeds, turns you into an obedient zombie. Do you know I'm about to do a show? They over there mixing cocaine they over there doing, I got a bunch of content lined up. They over there mixed up, they mixing. I ain't even gonna tell because I forgot. My fault, y'all. Just keep your bell notification. I can't even go into it, Miss Pam. I can't even give y'all the previews. I can't give y'all the previews because they in the cut, they in the cut. They watching, they watching, they watching the blueprint. I'm feeling like the Cat Williams of YouTube. 
Miss Pam, everything I said months ago, nobody listened to me, Miss Pam. Always a queen. What I said months ago, FTC Vice, what I said months, almost a year ago, nobody listened to me, y'all. Miss Pam did. FTC Vice did. Always a queen did. Team Guardian did. Team Yardian did. Shout out to Clarice Bradley. You dig what I'm saying? Am I the Cat Williams of YouTube? I, I, I've been exposed. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to use the word exposure. I've been trying to bring to light certain abnormalities on YouTube. No disrespect intended to nobody. I've been trying to show the anger that people have held inside for so long. Men and women. Because I used to be that angry person. But see, I learned to identify through the help of therapy what got me angry. See, when you get to the point of when you just say, you know what, I'm not going to be walking around just mad. You dig what I'm saying? Ready to just do something to somebody. And then the slightest incident between you and somebody could erupt to the fact where you could take their life or you could you can get your life taken or you can go to jail for the rest of your life. Anything like that. Hell no. When it's like that, when people can just erupt you and make you just overreact impulsively without thinking about the repercussions, 10 seconds to get you 100 years, it's time for you to go talk to somebody. Simple and plain. Simple and plain. Mimi said, Buri, hold on, Burudanga. What you from, Sab Siberia? Where you from, Nigeria or something? How you know how to pronounce that like that? Buranga. Bu, bu, Burang, what? Bura, bu, Rudanga. Burudanga. You got me up here sounding like. Burudanga. You have got me up here sounding like Michael Blackston. I ain't fucking with y'all. I am not fucking with y'all. DMA, uh, some color and a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot of random shit. Yes. Is it like a uh, upper class drug or like a lower class drug? What would you say? Okay. I think it doesn't discriminate, y'all. It's not discriminate. Okay. I've got to share this. You can get car insurance for as low. So this magical pink powder may have injected a nice colorful dose of psychedelia into Medellin's nightlife. But what's not so colorful are the violent narcos that actually make it and sell it. And there's one organization in particular called La Impresa or the oh, Enterprise. Oh, she must don't know my motherfucking African impersonation, Buru Dunga. What do you think? I cannot say that name. I have friends, I have friends from Nigeria. Buru Dunga. I have, I can't speak, I can't speak this language very good, very fluently. I do not understand why you did not know. Mimi, all I had to do is read. All I had to do is read. When I read it and put it together like you told me to do, separate the words all i have to do is separate the words once i separate the words purandanga purudanga purudanga reminds me of my uncle down in my village right we've given us access to their operations and they've become so rich from selling this trendy new drug that people are starting to call them neo-narcos to avoid putting all their drugs in one basket, the Enterprise has hundreds of smaller safe houses scattered throughout the neighborhood and connected by tunnels. These safe houses are manned by guards who protect and distribute the drugs to drivers. There's a police drone right there, too. Okay, what is it? The Enterprise are a new street gang in Medellin who get their drugs and their orders from the paramilitaries in the jungle. They control over half of Medellin and claim to be the first ones to make and sell 2C. Within the organization you work for, is 2CB one of the biggest? See, let me explain something to you. See, you see, you see, you see, you see. Let me say, let me talk to you about something right quick. See, let me tell you something about me. I'm a YouTuber. I would love to be a journalist to go to a certain place. I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't going to never see Big Dice there. I'm not going nowhere where niggas got costumes and they looking like rams and shit on their head. I'm not going nowhere where I got to go through no shit like that. That's when trying to be a YouTuber goes wild. You seen what happened to Hassan Campbell? Shout out to Hassan Campbell, man. I don't, you don't do that. I'm not going nowhere. You see what that nigga got? He got a horn on his head. This nigga got a blue horn on his damn head. 
And then the other nigga got on a bucket hat just like mine. See, them niggas will kill you. I ain't fucking with them type of niggas. Shit me. I'd have sent the drone up in there. Fuck that. The Enterprise are a new street gang in Medellin who get their drugs and their orders from the paramilitaries in the jungle. They control over half of Medellin and claim to be the first ones to make and sell Tusi. Within the organization you work for, is Tusi B one of the biggest earners for you? In this moment, there's more guys who are selling Tusi in Medellin. Have you seen these tactics? Tusi. That nigga said right now they got the biggest motherfucking. The, they getting the most money in Medellin, nigga. Over the Colombian, they said they the first ones to put this shit out, nigga. Ain't nobody got the recipe to this shit but these niggas. They said they getting the most money in Medellin right now. Good God. Ah, uh, Rick and Morty. Quantas cuesta? Esa la tenemos en el poblado. Podemos costar 200, 300 mil pesos. Depende de la zona que tenemos distribuida. So it's more expensive than cocaine. Sí. What do you actually put into CB? Tenemos uh, metafetaminas, todo sintético. So he said synthetic, synthetic metaphines. The same thing they said in the movie Deep Cover. Synthetic cocaine. So it's just a mix of pretty much every drug under the sun. Sí, porque es más fuerte. The original 2CB has no connection to, to this anymore. I think this is a totally different drug. Can I ask, do you ever put fentanyl in it? Fentanyl, sí, tiene fentanyl. Algunas personas le hacen daño, pero nosotros tenemos que vender. Okay, and the automatic weapons, are they mainly for other gangs or are they for the police? No, estamos jugando de, de todo. En ese momento tenemos dos drones que nos están vigilando. Is it normal to have drones watching your safe house? No, no es normal. Sabemos que nos están respirando la nuca en ese momento. No nos podemos demorar. Tenemos caletas mayores, tenemos túneles, nosotros podemos salir por todos los lados, pero no podemos mostrar todo. Ok. ¿Qué hora es? No sabemos qué. Sí, sí. Ok, well look, you've got two police drones looking at you right now, so... Muchas gracias. Gracias. Do you need any more shots of the... Um, the st have you got...? He says that if we have, have to try... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, gracias. That nigga said, hell no, I don't want no, none of that shit, nigga. No, 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 gracias. Okay, I'll try a little bit. Oh, shit, y'all see that? Is this the one with fentanyl in it? Oh, shit, y'all saw that? That nigga said, yo, you gotta try this shit. He was like, nah, amigo, I ain't trying none of that shit. Nigga said, yeah, you gonna try this shit, pussy. Cause we wanna make sure you ain't police. What I tell y'all about when, when shit goes wrong, when you try to be too much of a journalist, I'd have sent the goddamn robot up in there. I'd have sent the AI, I'd have sent the AI up in there, and I'd have been talking through the AI. Okay, peace, y'all. You see what them niggas told that nigga? You gonna try this shit, nigga. That nigga, he done turned into sexual chocolate. Hold up. Okay, I'll try it, but is, is this the one with fentanyl in it? All that super thug shit, running around trying to be super fly, trying to be Jimi Hendrix. Now, all of a sudden, you shaking like a stripper. Now all of a sudden you you diamonds from the players club. We have to try that. Oh, no gracias. No gracias. No gracias. No no no. Yo, please, what's up, boy? Okay, I'll try a little bit. Is this the one with fentanyl in it? Okay. Es poco. Dale, dale. Eso. Es poco, es poco. Y sienta la realidad. Fentanyl is a hundred times stronger than heroin, and even trace amounts can be deadly. Cool. Yeah, so I really didn't want to try that, but when someone has a gun and they're pointing at you, I feel like it's safer to just risk it and pray that it doesn't have fentanyl in it. That nigga hides a motherfucker right now, nigga. That nigga said he hides a motherfucker. That nigga said, I really didn't want to try that. He said, but it, when a guy got a gun pointed to you, he said, I really hope the fentanyl, because shut the fuck up, pussy. You shouldn't have been out there in them people backyard, you dumbass nigga. Didn't you just see that they got a goddamn drone over their goddamn stash house, you dummy? <laughs> and we gotta get out of here soon because it's a pretty dangerous neighborhood, but it appears that 2CB doesn't actually have 2CB in it. It's just kind of like a dirty concoction mixed together by cartels to make money with pink dye thrown in. In the best case scenario, you're probably getting MDMA, ketamine, maybe some GHB, some other synthetics. In the worst case scenario, you're getting fentanyl. Three these secret factors that will keep your child from getting into a top tier university. Feeling a bit trippy, a bit euphoric, a bit dissociative, and a bit. Pay, pay attention to what he just said. Fentanyl is a hundred times stronger than heroin, and even trace amounts can be deadly. Cool. 
Yeah, so I really didn't want to try that, but when someone- Didn't I tell y'all this nigga was high? Excuse my language. Didn't I tell you this brother was high? Watch this. Remember what I said. Listen to him talk right now, and then remember the segment that they would put up five minutes later. Pay attention. Has a gun and they're pointing at you. I feel like, like it's safer to just risk it and pray that it doesn't have fentanyl in it. And we gotta get out of here soon because it's a pretty dangerous neighborhood. But it appears that 2CB doesn't actually have 2CB in it. It's just kind of like a dirty concoction mixed together by cartels to make money with pink dye thrown in. In the best case scenario, you're probably getting MDMA, ketamine, maybe some GHB, some other synthetics. In the worst case scenario, you're getting fentanyl. Um now pay attention to what I just said. Remember when they always say five minutes later? Listen to him now. Feeling a bit trippy, a bit euphoric, a bit dissociative, and a bit stimulanty. After passing their test by trying their 2C, the Enterprise decided they trusted me enough to see another part of their operation and sent a driver to take me there. Hey, man! Welcome to my car, man! Thank you. El número uno, como le cuento, el, entre los jóvenes, el Tushi Ben es el, algo muy explosivo que llegó a todo el mundo, hermano, y que te juro que va a quedar por mucho rato. All right, we'll leave you to carry on peddling Tushi B around Medellin tonight. Good luck. Yeah, man. Mimi said people are fucking nuts. Okay, so apparently the Enterprise decided that they'd like us after that last interview, and they're letting us go see the actual cookhouse where they make Tushi. So we get to see how they actually make it and what they actually put in it. Un pitazo y una trova. A mí pues me pone play. Y a ustedes pues aquí están viendo. Bad vibes, salute, Ahí producir cocaine. Se vino desde la USA the building, y no le pidieron visa. Y aquí pues lo recibimos con dos F y una sonrisa. What are you guys doing right now? Es preparación es dos F. Okay, can you just explain to me how you make it? What you put in it? What are the ingredients? TMDM, la éxtasis. Oxicodona, clorhidrato. Eso es la ketamina. Ok. Tenemos colorantes tipo 3. Why do you put MDMA Yo, and Yo, came in, in the back part. We were starting off with Puff and everything because Puff got that list. Puff responded to everybody on motherfucking that shit. He didn't... Jill, uh, J-Lo, Naomi Campbell, Will Smith, Oprah Winfrey, Swiss Beats, Alicia Keys. Puff got a list that he said he don't care about. So now... I did a little digging and I looked into this pink cocaine they was talking about. It's not cocaine. It's called Tusi. And actually, it was made right in front of our face. It was brought to us back in the days with the movie some people know in here called Deep Cover. The man told us back in the days, it's a synthetic cocaine with metaphet, whatever the word is, metaphet, metaphet, metaphetamine, excuse me, metaphetamines that gives you the same auroric stimulation like you high. The only thing they did is they put a pink dye on it and they the only ones with the, with the recipe to that shit. Them niggas said that they are making the most money in Medellin, Colombia right now. They the only ones that got this shit called that pink, that pink Tusi, that pink cocaine they think it is, but it's not cocaine that Puff Daddy's mule got caught with. And they said this shit is three to four times stronger and more expensive than cocaine. Para dar un producto mucho más más efectivo. Estamos sacando la mejor calidad de Colombia. What's this? It's crack. Does this go in the 2CB? No, no. Este es mío. Oh, you just like crack, okay. Esto you so heard that shit? That nigga said, yo, what's this? He said, yo, that's crack, nigga. He said, does this go into the shit? He said, nah, I just get high, nigga, I like crack. <laughs> Lisi, honest, let's go. Tamina. Okay. Tenemos colorantes tipo 3. Why do you put MDMA and ecstasy? Para dar un producto mucho más más efectivo. Estamos sacando la mejor calidad de Colombia. What's this? It's crack. Does this go in the 2CB? No, no. Este es mío. Oh, you just like crack, okay. Estos son los míos. Nigga fuck with that fried chicken, yo. Manos de la obra. How much is all of this 2C worth? Eh, de 400 a 420 gramos. Un gramo es un punto. Un punto cuesta entre 40 y 60 mil pesos colombianos. This is a ton of money right here. 
So do you ever put anything else in it? I mean, we've heard of things like fentanyl going in, synthetic drugs. Todo depende del cocinero y la receta que le tenga. Entonces muchas veces hacemos estas cosas no porque queramos, sino porque de verdad. Muchos no nos gusta estar acá. You see this shit right here now? You see, you see, you see? The nigga done hit that cocaine and he using the goddamn gun to break down this shit. You see what I mean? That crack is crazy, y'all. See what I mean? He got that coke and look what happened after he hit that coke. That nigga picked the gun up. 40 and 60 mil pesos colombianos. This is a ton of money right here. So, do you ever put anything else in it? I mean, we've heard of things like fentanyl going in, synthetic drugs. Todo depende del cocinero y la receta que se tenga. Entonces, muchas veces hacemos estas cosas no porque quieran. Everything he could have got, he could have got a hammer, he could have got a spoon, he could have used the cell phone right there. This nigga so high, he gets the gun. See, see, that's when being a journalist goes wrong. Como si no porque de verdad toca. A muchos no nos gusta estar acá, pero la vida nos pone en estas situaciones. Have you ever thought that it might save you a lot of time if you invested in one of those baking mixers? Uh, no. Mixing together different drugs can sometimes be fun, but sometimes, like with the oxycodone and ketamine going into this batch, deadly. And that's one of the dangers of TCD. <laughs> The more time we spent with the enterprise, the more we began to realize that this pink branded product they've created might be the most successful innovation in drugs since cocaine itself. And behind it all what? is one mastermind. Finally, we had become trusted enough to meet the head one of their One person is behind this motherfucking potion. One person, one person is the only person that got the motherfucking remedy to this shit. It's only one motherfucker that got the recipe to this shit in the world they talking about, y'all. In the fucking world, y'all. Organization and the inventor of 2CB herself. Listing your house on the market isn't the only way to sell your house. Selling At the top of their organization is a woman called the Queen of 2C. And she's earning around 20 million US dollars per year in revenue. At the top is a woman, y'all. Self. And behind it all is one mastermind. Finally, we had become trusted enough to meet the head of their organization and the inventor of 2CB herself. At the top of their organization is a woman called the Queen of 2C. And she's earning around 20 million US dollars per year in revenue from selling 2CB. To interview her, we've had to get permission from, and she's had to get permission, from the heads of the largest drug trafficking organization in the world, the Clan del Golfo. So that's where we're headed right now. Going to the right. The Queen of Tusi is one of the most wanted people in Medellin, so she's always changing her address and moving from safe house to safe house to safe house. So we don't know until the last second where we're actually going to meet her. She just told us to go to a lay-by and wait for her call. Hola. Okay, that's hers. We gotta go. Okay, so all of a sudden we're being escorted by two Toyota Land Cruisers and two motorcycles, literally right in front of us and right behind us. This is the queen of 2C's security. So oh, we're just gonna follow them now man. to her safe house. I'm pretty sure the person we're about to interview is a bigger deal than we even realized. We've just made it to the Finca where the 2C queen is currently hiding out and we're gonna interview her. It's, it's a very nice house. This is like a proper narco pad. Um, she is a little bit annoyed at us though, because we're late, so we got a little lost in the way, so hopefully she's not too angry, because I mean, she has had many people killed before, so she's probably gonna be hopefully friendly to us. Hola. It's a very beautiful house. Okay. So why do they call you the 2C queen? La coca tenía demasiada competencia. El Tusi apenas estaba empezando cuando yo voy a viajar este día y traje la receta. Vi al principio que era muy rentable y fui creciendo. Desde la guaracha, las fiestas fuertes van unidas con el consumo, indudablemente. Esto es eh, para los jóvenes que quieren durar tres o cuatro días sin dormir. How much money do you handle per week? Ah. <laughs> Por día entre 30 y 50 millones de pesos. Have you ever had to use violence to defend your turf? No tanto. Llevo 12 años y he pasado por mucha gente para llegar donde estoy. No se puede dejar enemigos sueltos. O sea, hay un problema, hay que cortarlo de raíz. Mi antes jefe eh, hizo algo indebido y yo lo le dije al jefe y ahí ya ocupé yo el puesto. Does it ever weigh on your conscience? El, el primer mes, los, el primer tiempo de Jasper ya no. 
So no tiene nada que ver. And what kinds of things do you have to do to evade? You want to hear something funny, y'all? Is it just me? I want to, 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 this is crazy. I want to ask y'all something. How do we know that that's actually a woman that was born a woman? Pay attention to what we're saying. When he was at the low level with the DJ, she was one of the most influential, pay attention, transgender women in Colombia. Her and her bunnies. How do we not know this is not a transgender woman? Ain't that some shit to think about, y'all? Let's get back to the show. The police, the military, the DEA. Todos se saben, se paga. Shout out to Ziki Black, the elder. We got Ziki Black, the elder in the building, y'all. We got him in the building. Let's go. Tenga el dinero, no tiene problema. It's just as simple as that. You just pay them. Right. Toda persona tiene un precio. Y si no lo tiene, lo solucionamos. Is it true that cartels like yours are expanding to see production into Europe? Sí. Really? Sí. Ya no es solamente Colombia. Nuestro cliente es los Estados Unidos. This is Mr. Lopin. The product you've created, this pink powder, it's not really 2CB. It's kind of a mix of lots of other random drugs, isn't it? So is it a way to kind of make a lot of money off of a cheap mixture of leftover drugs, basically? Sí. Es una mezcla y... O sea, no es el propio 2C, no. Jamás. Is it all basically just a very clever marketing ploy? Sí. It is. Es, claro. It's a very clever way to make a drug more marketable by giving it a distinct color. Parece inofensivo. El color rosado parece inofensivo. Es lo que más atrae pues a la persona. Have you tried it before? Have any of you tried it before? Got my Nigerian brother James in the building. Walaikum salam, Aki. Nosotros no consumimos. Sabemos el daño que produce en el sistema nervioso central. When we started it off with Aki was, we was talking about how Sean, he responded, Puff Daddy, he responded, he got a list of people's names that he said he ain't going down by itself. Oprah Winfrey, to Gabrielle Union, to Naomi Campbell, to Will Smith, to Alicia Keys. The list goes on and on. Swiss Beats, Drake. The list goes on and on. And then we switched it over to what Cat Williams was talking about because they used to ridicule him and they said he was a hater. But when he did the Shannon Sharp show, I think, how many, how many views that shit is at right now? That might be the biggest interview Shannon Sharp has ever done. And everything that he said is actually coming to light. And then I did some, some, some digging on a situation with P. Diddy. And I went to the fact of the drug mule that was arrested. I, I, shit, that kind of interested me. Pink cocaine that is always used for these outlandish secret society parties with men on men, women on women, and extra type of sexual foolishness. So I did a you know, some, some research on the pink drug, and I found it because it's not cocaine. It's a synthetic cocaine. Synthetic power mixed with a meta, meta, the long M word. I can't say it sometimes. And it seems like, quote unquote, it's all about the transgender world with this. And this is supposed to be the top person in Colombia, in Medellin, that has the recipe. They said... They making more money than anybody. This pink cocaine is making more money than anything. Tusi. Lo que se logra es captar a la persona y dejarla ahí para que sea nuestro cliente potencial. Nosotros no vamos porque que le esté pasando algo a su familia, a su casa. No, nosotros simplemente vendemos y verán si consumen. Hopefully, the Europeans and the North Americans that the Tusi Queen is now selling to don't let the harmless pink color in fool them. Her goal is to get you hooked. People think that they decide what drugs they take, but they don't really. It's the narcos and the criminals who sell drugs that decide what drugs they take. And they've invented this bright pink powder. It doesn't really contain 2CB. It always contains some different cocktail of drugs. And it's just really their latest money-making scheme, and it's working. But despite that, it has now, had an indelible salute. effect on Colombia's music, its nightlife. It's created a whole subculture. In fact, now 2CB in Colombia has begun to enter a strange new phase. Having dominated the mainstream, it's now having its craft beer moment. People are literally making their own personalized 2CB concoctions at home in a bizarre bastardization of what was already a bizarre bastardization of 2CB. 
this is like really easy, you know? So that's, this is the reason why everybody's doing this at home. This is liquid ketamine? Liquid ketamine, yeah, right. Okay. So, so we have in here one gram of MDMA. This is like 100 uh, mi milligrams of ecstasy. Yeah. Okay. And we take the liquid ecstasy. Is it GHB? Yeah, right. Okay. So, and we just need like a little bit of this colorant, cooking colorant. So I prefer to cook it myself and not to buy it, you know, because it, it could be dangerous. It smells good. It smells like cakes. It, it smells like caramel. Yeah. What's <laughs> that? What's that smell coming from? From the colorant, because this is like bakery colorant. Perfect. So we got this. Now we can put it in here. The final step. Okay. So yeah. now we have one bag of 2C. Yeah. Voila. <laughs> it's crazy to think how many drugs are in that little pink yeah. package. So I'm just going to try a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes, it tastes good. Let me see, yeah. How long, how long will it take for you to feel the effects? Uh, it, I think that it's like in this, in, in some kind of, in some kind of sleep, yes. So right now right you're now. feeling high and easy. Yeah, I'm feeling high. He said, how long do it take? He said, easy, 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 easy. Perfect, so we got this. Now we can put it in here. The final step. Okay, so yeah. now we have one bag of 2C. Yeah, voila. <laughs> it's crazy to think how many drugs are in that little pink yeah. package. So I'm just gonna try a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes, it tastes good. How long, how long will it take for you to feel the effects? Uh, it, I think that it's like in this, in, in some tennis, in some tennis sleep, yes. So right now you're feeling high on TC? Yeah, I'm feeling high on TC, yes. He went back again. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's that motherfucking TC, baby. That's that motherfucking Tusi. That's why we thought him being caught with like a couple of ounces of it was nothing. Hell yeah, that shit was something. That ain't no motherfucking real coke. That's some motherfucking other coke these niggas made together over there in Medellin somewhere. That nigga had to go to Medellin to get that shit. They said, nigga, you brought that shit. They say that shit is more potent and more expensive. And they got some batches coming out with fentanyl. The nigga told him straight up and down. Yeah, some of that shit got fentanyl in it. He said, all right, then I'm about to see y'all. The minute they nigga said fentanyl, he said, I'll see you guys later. They said, no, 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 no. You need to check. You need to taste this, poppy. He said, no. <laughs> Them niggas said, yeah, 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 yeah. They said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, no, 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 no. That nigga pulled the gun out. He said, you gonna try this right now, bruh. Or you're going to die on camera. You ain't your man. Now you and your man going to get killed. Because now if we kill you and your man is recording it, we got to kill your man too. So the dude up there with the camera going, yo, chill, son. Try that shit, man. You see what my man James said? He said the panda outfit. See? Great minds think alike, y'all. I'm not going nowhere when niggas got panda outfits. Bullheads. Nah, that's... Nah. I'm more civilized than that. Dog says, so now these rap bozos want to make the pink stuff popular. But pay attention, dog. It wasn't about certain rap dudes. It was about Puffy's parties. Remember, that's the higher elite parties. That nigga Puff, did y'all hear the list of the names that Puffy said? Did y'all hear the list of the names that Puffy said? Matter of fact, let me tell you these streets is crazy right quick. I'm going to play it for you again, because if you act like y'all ain't here, let's go. They never loved me since my brother died. My mother cried. Tears in my eyes bleed red. Ain't no love inside. Mm -hmm. Streets left me doly. My phone, they left it holy. Mm -hmm. Dawn was in that passenger side when they tried to phone me. Yeah. You know the streets ain't never love us. Yeah. Uh -uh. I've been shot, I was left with a zipper on my stomach, nigga. 
You know these streets ain't never loved me. Love me. I've been stabbed, I've been left with a zipper on my stomach, nigga. You know the streets ain't never loved me. Love me. I've been locked, I got charged for some shit I didn't do, I nigga. Didn't do. You know the streets ain't never loved me. Love me. Caught a case, went up state, fuck the Jakes, nigga. Yeah, you know these streets ain't never loved me. Love me. Laying up in the hospital bed, and I see you. Hit that button like every three hours to get those blues, yeah Laying in the test of pain, I know shit gon' be the same Sip of my stomach, shit don't stop a thing, I'm still a man, yeah But who gon' be there when you doing time? Can't get no money, so they dropping down, these niggas bitter And I hope they get the picture, I'm only getting bigger The top cut out my litter, yeah Tell you they love you, but they hate you on the low <laughs> They hold you back, how they expect for you to grow I got locked up, ain't said me nothing, but I'm your nigga. I'm your nigga. My body numb, I got no feelings for you niggas. I'm from what niggas will shoot you right here in these hallways. If you got trust in that loyalty, goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. These size 11s, these pussies can't walk a mile in. Yeah, yeah. They hit my cousin with life and he's uh, still smiling. I been shot, I was left with a zipper on my stomach, nigga. You know these streets ain't never loved me. Love me. I been stabbed, I been left with a zipper on my stomach, nigga. You know the streets ain't never loved me. Love me. I've been locked. I got charged for some shit I didn't do, I nigga. Didn't do. You know these streets ain't never loved me. Love me. Caught a case, went up state, fuck the jakes, nigga. Yeah, you know these streets ain't never yeah. loved me. The streets ain't never. Yeah, if y'all ain't here, I'm gonna show it to y'all one more time. You know, everybody that missed it earlier. Puff ain't playing. Puff got a list too, y'all. He not playing. Pay attention. J-Lo, A-Rod, Will Smith, <laughs> Alicia Keys, <laughs> Justin Bieber, Kevin Hart, Mark Boyd. systemic issue that demands our collective outrage and action. Drake. Drake. Oprah. Oprah. J-Lo. J-Lo. A-Rod. A-Rod. Will Smith. Will Smith. <laughs> Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Snoop. That's two boys he was a wit that he said he's groomed. Usher's mother is suing him right now for giving him herpes and grooming him. Listen to what he said. Justin Bieber, Usher Raymond. Did y'all hear that shit? Yeah, that nigga Puff. You, you, you see what I'm saying?
see what my man James said? He said, damn, that's a long ass list. Did you hear what he said? Shaq and his whole family. Y'all didn't hear that shit? The nigga says Shaquille O'Neal and his whole family, sons, daughters, wife. Shaquille O'Neal, he said, yo, Shaq and his whole family. Like, he tell them niggas, play with me, y'all. All them niggas that y'all got up here on TV, sitting around and around the world like these are just prestigious characters and they, they living off this morale. He said, he looking like Denzel Washington in the end of training day right now. He said, it'll be goddamn cocaine cases on every one of you motherfuckers in here. Puff not playing. This ain't no regular nigga. Puff ain't playing. He not playing Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell, Oprah Winfrey, Drake. 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 Oprah. Oprah. J-Lo. J-Lo. A-Rod. A-Rod. Will Smith. Will Smith. <laughs> Alicia Keys. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Mark Wahlberg. I was waiting for somebody to catch that shit. You see what you see what dog said? That nigga using his fucking daughter to make a mockery of them with wickedness. Y'all ain't catching that shit. That little girl, she don't know what she doing. She's just trying to make her daddy happy. Y'all don't see that shit? He's making a mockery of them people with his daughter in his hand. That's a wicked nigga, man. Y'all better pay attention to him, man. He had Usher Raymond. This nigga's mean, y'all. Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. Shaq and his whole family. Shaq and his whole family. Tracy Ellis Ross. Tracy Ellis Ross. Tracy Ellis Ross. Diana Ross' daughter, y'all. Tracy Ellis Ross. Little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. Rick Ross! Pay attention to what he just said. The girl Drea. The girl Drea from the Housewives. Now all of a sudden she's having a baby with the NBA player that's the same age as her son. He just said her name, Drea. You know she's been to a puff party. You know she's been to a... They've been talking about her since she was on The Housewives. And she wasn't even a housewife. Ain't that some shit? She was a promise to be a wife and never got it. Now she's having a baby with a dude that's a couple of months older than her son. Can't make this shit up. Facts, facts. He said, if y'all don't know who that is, Nicole from the Pussycat Dolls.
Montana. Now over to you. What are your thoughts on this unfolding story? Did y'all hear the last name he said, y'all? French Montana. He always sitting in them videos with Puff. He ain't got no shirt on. He eating cereal and tacos and chicken emphasis and all that shit. He got his hair braided looking like Daisy Duke. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. I don't know about yours. He's sitting at the kid. Now think about that. What man is sitting at a motherfucking another man's table in the morning with his shirt off talking about good morning, Puff. Puff walking up on him talking about how you doing? He loved calling men daddy. How you doing, daddy? Are you loving your life, daddy? Like he's saying to him in front of the whole world, even though you done took a few of them cock mouth sandwiches, are you appreciating what the cock mouth sandwich got you? Aren't you a millionaire? Aren't you a worldwide name? You're French Montana. Before I get out of here, Hank, I see you in the building. We got Hank McCoy up in the building, content creator right there. He made that up. That's his, his, that's his sector there. Before I get out of here, man, I'm going to put up something that we always talked about, and I always said it first. And I want y'all to pay attention to this before I get out of here, y'all. I want to say thank you for everybody that came through. If you want to hit the cash app, you want to hit a super chat, you're more than welcome. I'm more than welcome. I'm more than appreciative. If you felt as though the show was worth rocking, let me explain something to you. This right here is more important. I'd rather you pay attention to this than hit that cash app. Do not sell your soul. This is a contract that was made back in the days. And shout out to Dog Soldier. He brought it up in one of his shows. The depiction of this was fine work back in the days. This, was, this, this is not something that was made today. This is an actual contract that was made up many, 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 many years ago. Like when I, my grandparents were, were young or they were young. You know what I'm saying? Like this is it's a contract to the devil, y'all. And I'm saying it so much, people are just signing their name on that dot. It says, I such and such hereby agree to sell my one and only mortal soul to the devil for a price that is ass, y'all. Peace to you too, Jason. But check this out. By signing this contract, I agree to surrender my soul to the devil upon expiration. So you get to do whatever you want to do while you're alive. You get to have the cars, the popularity, the money, the fame, the women, the men, whatever you want to do it. By signing that contract, you agree to surrender your soul to the devil, not your flesh. By signing the contract, you agree to surrender your soul to the devil upon expiration. Meaning when your physical body dies and that, that energy that does never die, instead of letting that energy come back to be reborn again, to come back, you might be a father this time. Next time, your son might be your father. It's like everything is getting turned around. They says, but no, you don't get to do that. After your expiration, you go into a life of enslavement and torture for all eternity for the price right here that he agreed in. He said, please mail me the check. But check this wicked part out. Right here at the bottom, there has a little box. You have the option. Look how evil and sadistic Shaitan is. They says, you have the option without your sister even knowing this. And the reason why is they're going to put it on your sister is because that's the mother of the earth. That's who can breed. You can sell her soul too. You can sell her soul too for a certain price. All you got to do is mail the contract to Satan. 666 Brimstone Ridge Hell. Is that worth it? Is that worth it? Just to walk around the world and start mayhem. Just to wake up and say, you know what? I want to make this person feel bad today. I want to embarrass this person. I want people to laugh at this person because of a problem 
that you may have with the person. Shout out to 050 China Brim and shout out to Queens Flip. They did a show earlier. Grown folk shit right here, y'all, before I get out of here. Make sure y'all get over to 050 The Movement and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Make sure y'all get over to Harlem Legend. The whole team over there at 050. They did a show earlier because China came to the defense of somebody that he had on his show because he felt as though, you know, they lined him up to come up on YouTube because, you know, they have plays and stuff like that. They thought that they walked him into a lion's trap. So China, when he went live this morning, that wasn't the content side of China. China kind of snapped. He kind of backslid a little bit, but, but alhamdulillah, he backslid a little bit because his emotions got involved. And then shout out to Queen's Flip. Shout out to Queen's Flip, man. He popped up in the chat. They had their little exchanges. China dropped the link. When China dropped the link, Queen's Flip popped up. You know, China, he on go time. He ready to go. Nigga, fuck. Check out the grown folks conversation. Queen's Flip said, yo, China, hold up, blood. He ain't said on no sucker shit like he was trying to disrespect him or discredit him. He said it like he understood that he was upset. He said, but yo, before you get too upset, let me explain to you what's going on before you continue to be upset. He didn't come up on the stage and be combative or disrespectful. Fuck you, China. You piece of shit. Ah, 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 ah. For the clicks and views. For the clicks and views. He did some of the most gangster shit that I can ever say. I got a total different respect for Queen's Flip today after the way he handled that. When he popped up, he looked at China and said, yo, you know what? Before this goes on, can you at least let me say my side of the story? And being who China is, he respected it. China said, you know what? Go ahead, talk. See, that's what gangsters do. When China thought about the whole scenario is they could have went back and forth and been screaming or China could have screamed on him, disrespected him and made him just say he didn't want to explain to China what was going on and he could have left the screen. But what they did is they both handled themselves like men. China sat back and gave him the floor. Queens Flip said, yo, when it comes to YouTube, yo, I'm, I'm just one of the realest shit I heard. He said, when it comes to YouTube, people are having to understand there's a difference between YouTube. I've been saying this, but maybe you'll pay attention to it because Queens Flip, he said it. He backed up what I stamped a long time ago. If people learn to differentiate reality from YouTube, there wouldn't be so much aggravation on YouTube. See? China did not know that Queens Flip and shout out the champ, they had a conversation and China didn't understand that Queens Flip already explained to champ, yo, my loyalty is to Math Hoffa. Shout out to Math Hoffa. He says, so when you, it's either up to you right now to either come up on the platform because it's going to be all hell but either you can walk up in it and go through what you're going through, like China say, bang out, or you can just decline the whole offer. Shout out to Champ. Champ said, you know what? I'm still going up there. When China and Queens Flip had a conversation with each other. See, Queens Flip could have let China think what he wanted to think. Queens Flip didn't have to get into the chat and say, yo, I'm here. Yo, check your DM. He's telling him, yo, China. Stop going crazy. Check your DM. So I'm imagining in my perception that in this DM, China, he's telling China, you're China, you're going crazy. We said, this is, what, this is what we do for entertainment because he said he is what he's called the devil's advocate. Just a character for you two to bring out entertainment. This is what we're here for, entertainment. Not for me to hurt you. Not for you to hurt me. Not for me to talk about your family. Not for me to talk about your personal business. Me, I just never could see the relevance of that. I've never seen the relevance of that in the street. And I will never understand the relevance of that on YouTube. But to each his own. If this is what certain people are enjoying as entertainment, I just hope no one gets hurt. But shout out to Queens Flip and China Brim for having a conversation that went from a high volatile situation to a calm situation. Because two men got in front of the world and handled each other accordingly, like men do. Like a matter of fact, not even like men do, like adults do. See, in the bi and see, in the alphabet, there's a little G 
and then there's a capital G. Which one are you? I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all share this live. Tell a friend. This is where the grown folks hang out. Don't forget to remember where y'all heard it first. Salute. Another day alive, another day free. Why would I wake up trying to be somebody other than me? Sun, moon, and stars. Everything exists has to coexist with it. Like I said, another day alive, another day free. Why would I wake up trying to be somebody other than me?